Matthews. Hello. <laughs> Amazing. Hi, welcome to episode four of season four of Pirates of Salt Bay. I am your intrepid GM, Abria Iyengar, and with me are the saltiest dogs that ever sailed the seven seas. My web captioner is not working now. I will get that up and running as we begin, but let's start with introductions. Uh, this week, let's start with Negs. Hi, hello. Um, I'm Nega Oryx, and I play Trislin, the Void Tiefling Rogue. That's me. Hi, welcome. Nice. Uh, how about now, Vanna? Uh, hello, my name is Vanna. You re remember me from the before times. <laughs> uh, but oh, I'm back yeah. to reprise my role uh, as Addy Bomyar, and... Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna I'm be doing the pew pews and the and the mew mews because she's secretly a cat person. Oh, that's really alert. several cats in a trench coat. You heard it here first. At least six. <laughs> At least six. Very she's lucky tall. cats. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Eric. Hello, everyone. My name is Eric, and I am playing Dirty Hank, the drunk dwarven monk and uh, and puncher of things. Thanks. And last but not least. The illustrious Terry Gamble. Oh, hi guys. I'm Terry. Um, I play Eos Raymerts. I am a pirate with the heart of gold who also really loves toast, specifically raisin toast, specifically cinnamon raisin toast. Amazing. I learned recently that that's very controversial, apparently. <laughs> I mean, I'm on your side on this, and between a lot the two of people of us, don't I like think... raisins, and I didn't know that till I met people on the internet. I mean, a lot of people I like raisins about a lot of things. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> I like raisins in the proper context. Do we have a toast emote? Wait, do we? What's that? Yeah, we have. A toast. Yes, we have two apparently. What? Three. Wait, what? When I'm so happy to oh, see toast, adorable. Oh God! If I open up one more tab, I do, I am afraid that I, it will ruin everything. All I feel like we're lost. we're we're always the last ones to know when there's new emotes, even if they're of our own faces. <laughs> Correct. We I didn't know until we go live with mine. I was pretty happy about it. I'm not gonna pretend it wasn't. <laughs> Yours is very good. Oh my God, thank you. Okay, uh, before we begin, we have a couple sponsors and announcements. Uh, we are kept afloat, even here, spread across the world in quarantine, uh, thanks to amazing sponsors and viewers like you. So before we jump into how all of you can help contribute to tonight's story, let's give a special shout out and a thank you to Hero Forge. Uh, Eric, do you have a little, a little boy? A little boy ready to go? No, I told you child? I'm not accepting. I'm not. I don't accept that. That's my child. That <laughs> I do have this nice miniature. Oh, it's a little boy. Yeah. Oh. Hero, Forge, Hero Forge uh, makes amazing customizable miniatures. Uh, they're uh, it's super granular. You can build and spec out your mini mini figs however you want. It's amazing. Uh, they are also unrolling uh, the ability to print in color, and they keep adding on new types of like kit and body body styles uh, all the time. So go give Hero Forge a shot. They're amazing. Uh, other than that, it is officially September, and that means uh, new subs get up to thirty percent off depending on the sub length. So uh, go to exclamation point subs in the chat for more info. Um, Please, we highly recommend that you all uh, be deeply and terrifyingly evangelical about your love of the channel and of our game. So uh, we encourage you to sub. <laughs> what? Yeah, I just want like a Jesus camp, but for Salt Bay. Is that fine? I love Salt Bay. Bay. Maria, you are asking for a cult. That is what you're asking for. I've always wanted yes. to be a youth pastor, but I don't like I've always been a godless heathen. So this might be my chance. This is your chance, Eric. Don't throw away your shot. I have to call my dad. He's not going to throw away this. his shot. shot. Oh, can I oh. get a shot? 
<laughs> oh wait, it's right here. I may have already had a few. Is this hey, what you want? The show. <laughs> this is it. We're doing it. Uh, so we encourage you to give subs to someone that you know, invite them to the channel, make them feel warm and cozy and welcome. And we have a goal, a sub goal of 200 new subscription, new, new subscriptions this month. Uh, and we want to try to make sure that all these gifted subs come back next month because there will be more story to tell in October. Uh, anyway, all of that to say, uh, we will have a special goal, a sub goal uh, for tonight. If we get to 25 new subs, uh, I'm gonna just let all of y'all cuties level again and oh. go and go yeah, and just be real good and strong. I thought we were gonna show titties. Oh, you can do that. That's okay. always an option. Oh, I meant that's like, for I don't, a hundo I don't subs. think we can. I think that's is that not true? TOS. I don't know who that is. What know, about can- Star Trek? Okay, well, hear me out. What about one titty? <laughs> yeah, if it's just the one, that feels fine. It's not a whole set. I don't feel it's only if, with this it's only right offensive. now. Please, please don't do that. Gary, please, you were trying don't. to show titties earlier. Don't lie. Don't tell the people. That was before the stream started. <laughs> Listen, we're all guilty here, and Eric is the only one reaping the benefits. <laughs> Listen, if we hit two. That's not true. I also. <laughs> Bria, this is a. a, a this if we hit ten thousand dollars, Minecraft server, please don't. <laughs> ten thousand dollars raised tonight. We start a saving throw show only fans. Yeah. <laughs> you okay, can just do a Salt Bay only fans. How about that? I like this. <laughs> ten thousand yes. dollars only fans. We're doing it. Demon hours. It's going to be super cute. This was. This is my time. Please don't let I, me down, chat. I think Eric can show his his titties. Yeah, I, I won't though. <laughs> but you can and that's I can play. and that's my just like a man just like yeah. a man well, ridiculous. I have the ability to do something and I'm actually refusing <laughs> amazing wandering opportunities uh, beyond all of that my my loves out there in chat land uh don't forget go to exclamation point unlocks to see what sweet bennies we have to unlock for tonight's game um appreciate Appreciate you all very much. And uh, we're gonna pick up in the game where we left off. So uh, the five of you, Eos, Trislin, Dirty Hank, Tommy, and Bray emerge from the tunnels below Mercy College on the battered and frozen Isle of Frere, bruised but victorious. As you make your way back to Dean Brightmass office so Bray can reverse his horrifying state, you see Addie standing with Raya and Bale. Addie, you eventually came on to the shore once you realized where you were. You were pretty consumed with spending quality time with baby Rose. And then it dawned on you that Frere is known for two things, shipbuilding, though it's no longer the season for it, and Mercy College, a place where foundlings and orphans uh, abandoned on the high seas wind up. I would like it if we started tonight with you making an investigation check for me. Oh, titties. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. I was like, I'm going to do a tone today and then titties. Uh, I mean, you know what titties means. I, I do. In all <laughs> fairness, she did ask kind of what you wanted to do with the game tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, as we get into your role, um, we do have a couple uh, re-rolls for the table. Uh, Terry, can you keep track this week or should we designate ready. a survivor? All right. The first one is from Lich98 and it goes to me. Thank you very much. And the second is from Stumpomatic, and it's to the table. So how did you do, Addy Balmiar? I did an 18. Ooh. A 19. A 19. Numbers are hard. It's a 19. Yeah, with a 19, uh, you're able, while sort of actively ignoring the frozen in time, impaled uh, human man that is uh, Dean Brightmast, uh, you're able to pull down a bunch of student records over time. And as you open them up, you see that it's not just names because a lot of these children that wind up at Mercy College aren't necessarily named, but they are contexts and rough sketches of what they look like. And yeah, you go back years and years, about 
20 years? How long ago uh, was your, your first child, your son, sort of lost to you? Yeah, I guess 20 years, yeah. Yep. And about 20 years of records back, you see two children, a little boy and a little girl, and the little girl's name, uh, there's no first name given, but the last one is Saturnus. And you recognize that as someone from your crew lifetimes ago. And the other is a little boy. And this is a black and white sketch, but he's about three years old with curly hair. And the, the sort of curve of his mouth and the sort of little snub of his nose reminds you so much of uh, your former lover, uh, Yannick Hyperion. And you know without a doubt that this boy who is referred to here as uh, Peter Gale is your son. Thank you, Siri. <laughs> Would you like to look up your son? <laughs> <laughs> After the game, Siri. Do I have Rose with me? Uh, would you have brought her onto, uh, onto the island knowing that it was a spooky place full of danger? I mean... You can if you want to. But, but, but the school's not dangerous, right? Uh, I mean, you, you wonder that as you stand next to a man frozen in a rictus of horror, having just taken a mortal wound. What a nice in statue. Time. What a nice statue, I say. Yeah, to baby Rose as you hold her on your head. <laughs> Let's go check out the school. <laughs> well, that's a really realistic looking statue that they built there, like an ice sculpture. I wonder how it stays frozen. And it's right about now <laughs> that uh, the rest of your uh, rest of your party comes back in. Bale and Raya were giving you a pretty wide berth for what it's worth. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that toast was pretty great. Um, yeah, but as they all kind of file back in, you see uh, a woman you do not recognize, a Triton. Uh, she's got a like instrument slung on her back. She walks over with uh, a spell scroll and starts deciphering it. And like this glowing green energy comes off of it. And you see what you recognize is a, a wish spell being consumed by the spell scroll as, uh, as the man frozen on and impaled on the wall suddenly comes back to time. And you see this like massive shard of uh, blue gray, metal this spike sort of floats out from him as if going back in time and the wound stitches close and the spike falls to the ground whoa Inert. oh oh you're not a statue uh, what oh god mm, no no i'm not thank you uh, thank you all did you did you deal with the Goliaths, with the hooded figure? Well, the, the Goliaths were dead uh, already, and now they are dead again. And the person in the hood, well, he just disapparated. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, thank you for getting rid of the menace. I don't know where he would have fled to, but if the college is safe, are, are the children safe? And it's at this point that like Bray begins to explain what's going on. She kind of pulls him off to the side and he's effectively out of this conversation as you all are sort of here uh, collecting yourselves. And this is before or after I go and look at the like archives. Uh, this is shortly after. Was there anything else you wanted to do while you were- I, I just wanted to see what like Rose's reaction was to the image. Mm. Uh, I want to see what that magic ba baby has to say. Yeah, I will never forget that the most important player of Rose is now and will always be Negs. So Negs, how, do <laughs> how does Rose react to this sort of like drawn picture of another baby? Uh, I think up until now, Rose has been doing that baby thing of like, 
she definitely has a wide-eyed interest in just everything because everything is new and interesting to her. Um, but when she sees that portrait in particular, I think she does that baby flappy hands thing where they're excited, but they don't know how to use their hands quite yet. So they just kind of like move them a little. She's just and, smacking me in the face. <laughs> yeah, and so like with one hand, I think she's kind of trying to like grab your hair with one hand and with the other, she's reaching uh, towards the baby in the little uh, rendition. And she's making little like gurgly cooing sounds. Nice. I think uh, she probably makes a similar sound like when she sees Taika after waking up from a nap or something. It's like a familiarity. Yeah. Kind of. Okay. And the one thing I'm going to add on here is that uh, she's occasionally able to reach forward and like slap the page itself and where her hand hits uh, color springs forward as if the image was suddenly colored in and it's like photorealistic Ooh. and it slaps like an area that's just clothing at first and you just see normal black sort of swaddling uh, rags but at some point her hand grazes next to his hair and these little curls are the same red as your hair Addy. And she slaps one more time and it catches the side of his face and his eye. And those green eyes are your eyes, Sadie. Um, Addie's going to stare at it for a while and then lay the book down and with one hand rip the page out of the archive. Sweet. Uh, as it's torn... Uh, <laughs> The, the dean is suddenly snapped from his reverie like, ah, you could have just copied or a convert. You didn't have to rip it. You don't I, have to rip it. I thought you were unavailable. So I just, you know, did what I do, which is rip things I, so I can have them. Uh, if you would be so kind, may I please mend that back into the book and I will no. offer you- any other information you need to know? No, this is about mine. that child. This is mine. Uh, but you could tell me more about the child. Well, that's not really a negotiation. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Do you want to die? Is that what you want? I don't know why you're threatening me. I don't know who you are. Just tell me just about this child. Torn this book. Just, just, I'm going to rip every page out of every book in this motherfucking office if you don't tell me right now. Who I've this seen child her do is. It before. She like ripping. I don't think you're in the uh, the office with me, right? Or, yeah, or everyone's they? in here now. Everyone's in the office. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Uh, and he turns to you and his expression is like super soft and he doesn't seem to be like bristling the same way you are in this altercation. And uh, he kind of gestures to a candle and it comes up and is lit and all of you smell this like really nice, warm, cinnamony kind of cookie smell permeate through uh, the office. And he just gives you a little, like a little smile and just says, I can imagine that you are feeling a lot of things right now. And anger is the one that's coming forth. But I would offer, I would love it if you had a seat and we could absolutely work. I'm not angry. information you need. I'm not you're angry. I'm, life. I'm in a hurry and you're, you're did, diddly daddling. Yes. I've got places to be and I just, I just need this information for reasons immediately. Is this your child? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Please make a deception check with disadvantage <laughs> for me. I can I just, can I just. The curve of your little mouth trying to say no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> can I just choose to fail it? Yeah, of course, of okay. course. I think yeah. as Addie does that, Rose starts giggling and clapping like she told a joke <laughs> or something. She's like, Addie's <laughs> trying to like with her free hand, just like <laughs> hold her hands close, <laughs> holding onto the page like this and then trying to be like, <laughs> stop that. <laughs> May I please, please see the page that you've torn out. I will offer you whatever files we have on the child but for the sake of the cleanliness of our records, for our ability to help reunite and reform all manners of families that were lost, I ask that you offer 
please return the page to me. Please. You said you can make a copy? I can offer you much more than a copy. And he actually gestures at uh, like his entire back wall is bookcases and like some of them are broken in where he was impaled, but on the low shelves <laughs> are lots, are lots Whoops. of like pull drawers. And he sort of gestures at those specifically as if to say, we keep records of everyone that passes through here. Okay, well, as long as you have one that looks exactly like this, then you can have this one back. But if, it, if it's any different, I don't, uh, as a no, no deal. Okay, understood. And uh, he just holds his hand out for the page. Do you give it back? Ye reluctantly. Also, it, she's like crumpled it in her hand. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, uh, as you hand this crumpled page, like he pulls it out and his fingers sort of uh, leave these like, I don't want to say snail trail, but it's sort of a magical snail trail across the page as uh, it uncrumples and smooths itself. And when he puts it back in the book, he traces his finger along like the tear. And uh, those of you that have magical ability know that he's casting mending and putting the page back to rights. And he looks at the name and sort of nods and looks up at you and then nods and closes the book, puts it away and then pulls out like an inch wide file that corresponds to a person named Peter Gale. And as he like comes and sits back down, uh, he looks at all of you and says, can I, I'm so sorry, this is a, uh, can I offer you tea or rest or are you all okay? This might take a moment and I don't know if uh, you, this is sensitive. I don't know if you want everyone to be here as we discuss this. Please let me know how you would like me to proceed. Um, and Addie kind of like looks around. Sorry, my camera is just absurdly out of focus. No, you're good. And I don't know how to fix it. You look soft focus like <laughs> I don't a know how to movie fix it. star. Ooh, I like it. Right. Um, Addie will like look around at everyone and sort of try and gauge like what they want to do. Like if that's something they want to be a part of or if it's like they want to give me that space or they definitely don't, I don't know. Yeah, whatever they're feeling. Uh, Trislin kind of just puts her hands up a little bit and steps back a little bit to kind of be like, you need space. And uh, there's a little nod between uh, the Dean and Bray and she actually leads you out. And if, for those of you that follow, she's going to go offer tea and these like, and the tea is like a very weak potion of healing. So you all are just sort of in a short rest, resting and recovering. Whoever wants to stay can stay. Whoever wants to go can go. Um, there are other, I'm gonna keep hitting this mic and it's probably a nightmare, I'm very sorry. Uh, there are other things to uncover and discover here within Mercy College, uh, very specifically Dirty Hank, uh, the Alcorin uh, nature of like the house seat here is still interesting and important to you. And uh, for you, Trislin, very specifically, uh, Bale and Raya are sort of following you in order to like have a moment uh, to speak to you. You do not look excited about that. Interpersonal communication, great. Uh, first things first, Eos, where do you go? That's what I'm trying to think. I feel like, didn't I smell something about cinnamon raisins somewhere? Like, is there some- I like how it's that? like, Addie's about to like meet her other kid and her husband is like, I'm gonna go eat toast. <laughs> it's toast o'clock. Toast o'clock. It's toast o'clock somewhere. Is just, he's just the, the most stereotypical 90s sitcom dad you could possibly be. Not my kid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if I was encroaching or if she would want me there. I should ask her. Uh, Communication, I imagine. <laughs> I'm trying to be a better man. Um, uh, this seems like really important information you're about to get, my dear. Uh, do you need me here or will I be weird and awkward and distracting? I mean, I think you'll be weird and awkward and distracting, but that's kind of exactly why you need to be here, I think. Okay. 
sounds good. I'll be right here. Uh, if you need to squeeze my hand, you can do that. If you need me to grab you some toast because it smells like someone's making some somewhere, I could also grab that for you too. It's it's a it's a candle, Leoj. It is in fact just a candle. It smells so <laughs> realistic. Honestly, it made me very hungry. I probably have some in my pocket. Hold on. And uh, as Eos delves into his pockets, uh, the dean sort of like very lightly pats the folder to like return your attention. And as he opens it, he just says, Peter Gale came to us 21 years ago as uh, an 18 month old child uh, in the care of people who claimed no family or kinship with him. Uh, we don't have, none of them left names. There was no sense of uh, who his family was but he stayed here for 17 years, trained up to be a very fine musician and was eventually accepted at a Bardic college in Waterdeep. And uh, he pushes the folder towards you and there are sketches. Uh, there's a smaller version of the one that's in the book. And then every five years, another sketch of what he looks like. And you see uh, lots of them are like, really scratchy, scrawly ones of like him playing in a room full of a bunch of other students. And he's like, his cheeks are super puffed out. His hair is like way too curly and too long uh, as he puffs on like a big bassoon. Uh, there's like drawings of him playing with other people. And then uh, at his age of majority, when he was accepted in leaves, he has like one, like, it's not quite an oil painting. It's like chalks but it's super detailed and you can see all of the coloration of him he has like the super ruddy cheeks uh the little snub nose and the sort of like turned in pouty lips of yannick and uh but all of the coloring of him is so deeply and fiercely balmiar and uh yeah he's holding like a little letter you see uh, sigils of water deep because you spent plenty of time there and he just, and uh, everything after that, there's like two more interactions of notes that he sent uh, along with stipends of 500 gold that he sent back to Mercy College to fund it, sort of an alumni donation uh, with fond letters to the Dean and, to the, and well wishes to the students. The most recent of which was five years ago. Or sorry, a year ago. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, it's just, you know, you think um, you're never going to see someone grow up, you know, and then it happens in a matter of pages, just decades. Honestly, it feels the same way when you're right next to him. I'm, I imagine it feels a, a little different. Well, it just feels like the pages go fast of life, you know? Uh, at least you're there for all the fucking footnotes and the epilogues and the prologues and... You're here right now. I think that means something. Tell me, he was good, right? Like a good kid? I remember Peter. Not terribly well, but in my line of work, that's usually a good thing. He was not quiet, but reserved. Incredibly talented. Uh, stubborn at times, but fair and kind. That's what I remember of him. And it's like, it's pretty hard, right? To get into the water deep school, like. Oh, it is by far the most illustrious, yes. And we do a very good job here. And he sort of puffs up his chest a little bit. Right, well, don't need to rub it in. 
I don't mean to come off unkind, but he had a good life here. He was safe and cared for, and he flourished. But this, and he taps uh, the pile one more time. This is not the end of his story. It's just the beginning. And now you know where to begin. Take this. Find him. It seems like he's done pretty well without me. Uh, and to be honest, the only person in the family who isn't tied up in some questionable activities. So, you know, I appreciate the sentiment, but I do think he'd probably be best uh, left to his own devices. I don't believe for a second that that is true or that you believe that. You want to believe it. You need to believe it. But I, as the Dean here, I am a master of storytelling and I know full well the lies that people tell themselves in order to move through the world, through guilt and pain and trauma. But you wouldn't be here. You would not have threatened my life for a drawing if you didn't think that there was a chance, if you had given up on him. I think that Dean person is very smart. Thank you, I'm right in front of you. I think, yes, I'm aware. I'm just talking to her right now, so. Well, yes, but we you're don't have smart, to but you're not smart enough to be in a conversation on this side. I'm over here trying to talk. What do I know? I was just stabbed for like a day. <laughs> I've been so stabbed every that. day for the past 30 years. <laughs> but that's pretty normal. So <laughs> stabbing. Yeah, that's like foreplay, basically. I mean, ah, too much information. So uh, I knew I was going to be awkward. I'm so sorry, my sweet. I am going to say, though, <laughs> that a child, no matter when they meet their mom, I think it might be a really like important thing for his life because sometimes children feel like they're missing something. I know it's they're not, but he might feel that way. And honestly, I think he would be really happy to see you. And even if he's not happy, I think you still need to know just for some closure. That's okay. Cause my that thoughts. really worked out with my other kid. Yeah. Yeah. It's not always going to be good. I didn't say it was always going to be good, but I said, you might want some closure. At least, you know, I mean, we could just, you know, do, do you know, does he have any sort of like performances coming up or like- um, You're trying to go to his talent show I'm, or something? Well, um, we'll just, we'll just go. From Waterdeep. Well, I maybe he sent you way. an invite as like a, um, a, just a, 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 a you know, a cord cordiality. That's a word. Everything I have from Peter is in the folder. Can you like call him or don't tell him I'm here. Just be like, hey, you got any shows coming up or? I know that you must be nervous. You must be, I cannot imagine your fear and anxiety about this, but just go to him. You can reveal yourself, you cannot, that's on you. But oh, you don't well. need me anymore. You know, you're really calm for like someone who was dead a matter I, of minutes ago. Children for decades. Honestly, it was a bit of a break. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, what, what the rose just like shits her pants right then. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, you know, charts everywhere. <laughs> uh, she takes a big old dookie. A little bit of it wafts over the candle and he just goes, <clears throat> and he flicks his finger and uses prestidigitation to clean her up immediately. <gasps> what? I do that too, because I also have prestidigitation and I totally had that idea <laughs> before. So, wow. Yeah, I Maybe do you that. You could have been using the prestidigitation this whole I time. I do that all the time. 
to time. fix the oh, no <laughs> you couldn't use that to fix that yo don't undermine so my difficult. motherhood in front you know, of the you know what of lost computer. children <laughs> that spell very well she could probably be fixing her own diapers at this point oh she could why is, is she, she not doing <laughs> well you know she she's got a bit of hither thither if you know what i mean okay and he's going to use prestidigitation again and draw just a very simple circle. How does, and it's just, a, it traces sort of like a golden glow in just in the air in front of oh him. Oh my God, Rose makes the Disney symbol. <laughs> you remember those? Welcome to Disney. Disney. Yeah. <laughs> and then they, and then someone went back and edited what it would actually look like. And they're just like, they're a <laughs> nightmare. Hor- horrifying, like, uh, <laughs> like sketches. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's so funny so what what does what if anything does rose do in response that's you next yeah i know i had to think about how cheeky <laughs> i was gonna be with it um <laughs> disney <laughs> disney d i yeah i, I want to say that rose is just full out doing the disney d but no i think in her little baby brain she kind of thinks that she's doing something that coordinated but she's young enough that like she she's still figuring out what arms are and what her fingies do and stuff. So I think she raises her hand to start doing stuff and then gets distracted by her fingers and starts doing that. <laughs> she Accurate. just shoves glowing fingers in her mouth. Yeah. Baby, <laughs> baby Rose is just drunk Tristlin. <laughs> it's all making sense now. It's all making sense. Ah, this crossover casting is so right. <laughs> nice. Uh, he just looks as Trislin sort of, or <laughs> Trislin, sorry, or at least just sort of eats her own glowy thingies and he's like, mm, okay, well, yes, she's magical. See, probably. she's amazing. <laughs> she's very talented and you ought to be very proud. I am very proud. Right. But I'm a little. Say that she's sticking her fingers oh. up her nose. She's just, Addie is to, like, just like, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> You know, she'll be changing her own, she'll be changing her own diaper by, don't give me that look. (laughs) By the time she doesn't need them anymore? Yeah. No, like tomorrow, you know, now that she knows she can, she probably understands. Uh, And the Dean just sort of lets this happen a bit longer. uh, And we're going to go ahead and like push towards, uh, what are you up to, Trislin? Trislin got some of that nice healy tea and she is sitting like as awkwardly as you can imagine just trying to stare into the teacup and not make eye contact with anyone around her like (laughs) no interest in socializing no interest in prolonging this longer than it needs to be just she is patiently waiting for Addie to be done so they can be done with this place uh, I think after a couple long minutes, uh, Bale will just come up to you and tap you on the shoulder and say, I, I apologize. I understand that you don't want to be uh, bothered, but I don't want to leave things off like this. You fulfilled uh, on your end and I, I, I'm, we're, both of us are very grateful for everything you've done for us, Tristan. Well, um, I owe you nothing now. We're even, right? I, you never owed me anything. I, I, I know that relationships are the things that we think we owe to other people, but if anything, I owe you a lifetime's worth of apologies. I I didn't know what my mother was planning for Melina and I wish I'd been smart enough to see her scheming or strong enough to stop what happened. I will spend the rest of my life regretting that I robbed you of a sister by falling for her that day. 
Um, Your regret does nothing to bring her back, so keep it to yourself. Yeah, that's fair. Um, this isn't the payment. Uh, Raya is headed back to the keep to collect what she can by way of a thanks. But, and he pulls a like really thin red, like hammered red gold, sorry, band of uh, metal from around his pinky finger. It's really small, it's really delicate. And he offers it out to you. He says, she gave me this a long time ago when we made the promises that uh, young people in love do. And I loved her too, just for what it's worth. I know it doesn't mean anything now, but I know she would want you to have this. And Thank you. Uh, the moment you take it, it feels warm. And it reminds you of her hugs when you were younger. And this is a ring of warmth. Well. And he just sort of looks at you expectantly, I guess is the best word. He's still hoping that there can be something here. Will you be staying here now that things are solved? I mean, this is, my place is here being whatever, whatever Raya needs me to be for her. Uh, yeah, I'm staying here. My family, all of them, good and bad, are gone. She's the only family I have now. Well, I guess now I know where to find you in the future. So, so many years don't go by before we have more uncomfortable silences and conversations again. <laughs> uh, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw as he attempts to hug you. <laughs> ah. Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Why would he ruin what was such a beautiful moment? Because he's an emotional boy. God. Uh, he's full of feelings. Yeah, you see this coming. You can dodge it if you want. He rolled a 12. Okay. Uh, Trislin is going to notice what's happening and stand up from her chair, kind of like pretending like she was already doing that to avoid the hug. Uh -huh. And as soon as she sees him kind of like falter, she's going to put like an awkward, like, all right then. And she just kind of awkwardly like i think she doesn't really know how to show affection so when she tries to like affectionately put a hand on his back instead she misses and she kind of like slaps his neck a little bit but she's like <laughs> oh my god there, there. tristan stresses me out how awkward she is <laughs> <laughs> she really does uh, unbothered by this bail sort of like squeezes you really tightly and then gives you a kiss on the forehead the way he did when you were uh, little and would run up to greet him when he would come to visit your your family. Okay, she'll give him a hug after that. Yeah, sweet. But as long as no one's watching. I don't know, Hank, are you watching? Hank's not there. <gasps> okay, yeah, no one's Damn there. It. I was I, I have so binoculars. hard. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> my magical, I have a magical set of binoculars. That's my magic item. Mm -hmm. That when when Tristan's showing emotion, they like oh. buzz. And if mm -hmm. I hold them up to my eyes, I can no, see. Yeah. don't. Yeah. No. <gasps> she's doing it. Them. Our girl, she's really doing it. <laughs> yeah, I think, that, I, I think that item's in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. It is. <laughs> actually, well, here's the thing. It's actually in Tasha's. Oh, OK. So it's mm -hmm. not released for everyone yet. Mm -hmm. But we yeah. got early access to right. Tristan binoculars. Tristan emotional binocular detector device. <laughs> yeah. They're really specific because they only work on Trislin and about her. So strange for other people to pick it up, but and it's had, the, yes. It's the only had, reference yes. to Trislin in any official yeah. DD. Exactly. Trislin's going to give him like a really, really rush, but really, really tight hug. Mm -hmm. And she's just gonna whisper in his ear and just say, be well. And then she's gonna like 
do one of those like bro like slap on the back thing. Why does she keep she, going? Why does she keep going? Away and not, <laughs> yep. not look at him. Like she just kind of does that like fast pat and then books it out of the room. I'm, s- I'm so stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> it was Either. a perfect interaction. What are you I talking need to rip about? Off all my clothes. I just I can't. <laughs> Not till we get to a, t- a $10,000. You got to leave the clothes on. Uh, okay. Uh, so the camera sort of wipes from that uh, scene. Where does the camera find Hank? Uh, he is back in that sort of chamber that they fought uh, the the Goliaths in. And he is uh, clearing their bodies out. And he's mm-hmm. doing the best he can to sort of like... He doesn't know exactly how to like rebury all of these dwarves. But this is... I mean, these are... This is his family's tomb essentially that he is trying let me clarify so here's the thing and here's the thing i'll have you pick up from like literally like engravings in and around uh this is the alcoran ossuary so it's where they keep bones of of people Uh, uh most of these bones are actually human this is a lesser branch of the alcoran family uh that sort of fled to frere and you see, uh, you see references to the mountainous region where Clan Dor used to hold sway, and references to their fealty to a liege lord. And then the narrative, the sort of decorative understanding of their history, gets very quiet about what happened. And then there's a, a knowledge of a splitting of those who held the dwarven seat and those who fled to other shores. No reason is given, nor why. There's okay. probably more other places, more information in other places, but not a lot here in their like propaganda bone hut. Yeah. So he's like, I, I guess that ain't like, ain't my cousins or nothing, but I guess it did. Uh, yeah, I started something. What else am I going to do? So he just like clean up as best he can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, as you clean up, um, you're able to find like lots of little items that remind you of things descended from uh, the like dwarven finery of your youth, that youth you can barely remember. Yeah, it's quiet here. There's other places to find, just one more time, other yeah. places to find more information and uh, lots of references to uh this is a place where old bones are kept and there's another ossuary directly under uh, Aurora Keep. Okay, and he'll, he'll uh, probably spend some time looking up information about the clan and stuff like that. Hell yeah, give me an so investigation. So we can go on a treasure hunt. Treasure hunt. Treasure hunt. ta 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 treasure hunt. I just was reenacting. I did a children's theater piece many moons ago where I played an evil like robber witch, and I <laughs> taught all the kids in the audience to sing about searching for some treasure. And that's yeah. like I was like, oh, fl-. I, like I like went into, like choreography yes. in my head. Oh, my, sorry, that's all that was. I uh, no, it was I, beautiful. Uh, before you give me the result, by the way, Eric, I do want to say that uh, as you're cleaning up bones, uh, another little gold dragon drops from the ground and onto the ground. And it lays there in front of you. Right, um, I'm going to scoop it up. Hell yeah. Magical. You see the same thing as on the other ones. Yeah. Uh, a face uh, in profile, long dreads. Um, would you like to make a, a secondary investigation check to recognize the face? Sure. What was the result of the first one? It was, I used a reroll because I assume okay. we have a bunch. Cause um, I mean. Oh, I guess I could talk about that. But the result was a 16. But- yeah uh, i won't but. i'm a butt i'm sorry i'm a whole butt uh yeah a 16 you were yeah will resolve the extra information that you're able to find what about the investigation on the coin the investigation on the coin i got a two i ain't seen this oh my person. god you're so bad at money it's just money feels good in your pocket yeah. and it functions the way the other gold coins do you can use it for an automatic natural 20 Cool, 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 cool. Tight, tight, tight. Okay, so uh, as you go to investigate and find more information, um, 
yeah, you sort of follow these catacombs and before you realize it, you are actually directly under Aurora Keep. Uh, you can hear the sounds of shuffling and dragging and coins dropping from uh, directly above you up a staircase and like through a trap door into the keep properly. You're not necessarily sure where you are. Doesn't sound inherently dangerous, but you're down there and you find like old scrolls uh, written in ancient Dwarven. And yeah, we'll just, we'll hit you with that lore drop now. And uh, these are the confessions of Clan Alcorin and the divide that sent the lesser branch here was started as the greater branch took power after the mysterious death and the words used around like accident and mysterious death are not the ones you would expect them to be as if there is an like a, a secondary meaning as if those are the words that we say aloud when we refer to this undertaking this event as they took power in the vacuum of Clan Dur's extinguishment at sea. And you see that uh, the two like siblings, as they branched off the older one, was a Tempest cleric. A devotee of Storm God. Is there a reference to where that person went? I mean, he, uh, yeah, it's the idea that he went on to lead his house. And as far as you know, house, uh, Clan Alcorin still holds the seat uh, in the lands where Clan Dor used to reign. Okay. Okay. So it, he's taken in all this information and yeah, doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Great. None of us know how to process our emotions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I feel like we need these to characters go to are therapy. Too close to real life. <laughs> are they? What? At least no, no, no. they're nothing like us. I'm fine. What, what? Terry? <laughs> I've talked for I'm so sorry. Long I'm putting. I'm gonna put more meals up. It's fine. We're fine. Yeah. <laughs> no. We're all fine here. <laughs> Well, then here's what we're going to do. Trapped if, in... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say the difference is that we go to therapy sometimes, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We actually reach out for help, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's where, where we'll sort of wipe our uh, scene in our tableau. All of you are caught in these, like, interesting emotions at the crossroads, and we could follow these stories for another 10 seasons, but we won't. What we're going to do is jump 20 years into the future. That's two decades, Bria. It's two whole decades. Thank you, Vanna. I think Addie's an old bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're young still. I think Life she's like six. Pretty fast. She's like 60. For what it's worth, you're also yeah. half elven. So that's it true. works differently for that's true. Kind. She looks fucking hot. Well, let's find out uh, as we sort of come down, the camera comes down with this establishing shot. Uh, uh, we see a young woman walking down a clean, bright street in the North Ward of Waterdeep. Her head of bouncy auburn curls swings into her face as she quickly jerks her head around to peer down, down a dark alley as she passes it. She brushes her hair up and out of her eye line and we see coppery bronze skin and hazel eyes that narrow with the unmistakable suspicion and alertness of her mother. Rose pauses, trying to will her eyes to adjust to the dark. She knows something or someone is here. A tense moment passes and then another. And she relaxes, turning her attention back to the streets ahead of her. And that's when she sees the figure shrouded in darkness, blue robe standing head and shoulders above everyone else walking down the busy street. It's as if they've gathered the shadows of other alleys and alcoves about them and other people that should notice this figure tremendously out of place with a sense of gravity and distortion around him. Their eyes slide by and they do not pay him mind. And though she can't see their eyes, she feels the wash of goosebumps that accompanies a fierce stare down. And the figure lifts a gray gloved hand 
and produces a single gold dragon. It glints brightly in the sunlight as they flick it up into the air. And then they flick another and another. And Rose watches their paths, but somehow loses sight of them at the top of their arcs. And when she looks back down at where the figure stood, they too have vanished and the coins never hit the ground. Rose stands on the spot at a long moment, mind racing, and the thinly concealed worry over untold secrets is a perfect mask of her father, Eoj. Eventually, she remembers herself and resumes her determined stride in the direction of the only building imposing enough to stand beside the literal giants of Waterdeep, Blackstaff Tower. It's 20 years later and an autumny day in the seaside city, bustling with life, and though it is the future, not much has changed in the intervening decades. And the question I have for each of you, and you can go whatever order you want, there's no initiative here. Where are you today? Who wants to go first? Uh, what a sound! I, you, whoa, 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 whoa. You say 20 year jump and then you go, okay. You're all level 18 now, by the way. This is this is wrong. This is against God. Okay, so we see, uh, we pan out to a sort of like country home, not not terribly close, but not too far outside of, of city limits of like Waterdeep. Uh, and uh, there's uh, there's like some some there's like a vineyard of sorts, and then you see it emerging a uh, slightly older Hank. Uh, he doesn't look that different. He ha doesn't dress any better. He's got a little bit more gray in his hair. Uh, but he is he is he's carrying like a, a basket of 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 wine grapes and uh, and and like carrying them. But like shooing away, there's several like small animals that are like climbing at him, trying to get him. He's like, no, it's not time. No, you get dinner later. It ain't even time for dinner yet. Oh man. Okay. Uh, Dirty Hank, as you are walking through your vineyard, I'm yeah. assuming, as you walk through your vineyard, uh, the, the sort of breezy, cool day sort of brings your mind back to the past. Uh, I would like you to tell me what was your highest point in the last 20 years? Uh, Hank, uh, his, his m m proudest moment, uh, the only like uh, piece of clothing that he has that is of any note is he has a very fine belt uh, with a the the f a carved metal face of of a giant because he entered a drinking contest against cloud giants and he not only won he beat the pants off of them so badly that uh, he was awarded a, a this this tremendous belt that he wears in pride uh, that because he's he's never like he he's 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 tried he's slowly built his drinking prowess to the point where even the cloud giants were like I gotta I gotta go up against the and these are cloud giants like they they drink cups the size of Hank and he still yeah. outdrank them and uh, the tale of Hank is so uh, strong amongst not just the cloud giants but all of the giants of the ordning as your tale has sort of spread what do all giants and giant kin refer to you as when they find you and meet you and learn of who you are. Uh, they they call uh, in he in in their language it's ever thirst because because he, <laughs> he can always keep drinking. Yes, they call you uh, Dirty Hank, ever thirst, and uh, yeah. Was that? <laughs> <laughs> it's Golston, and you actually see like uh, the camera sort of pans up, and uh, am amidst the vineyard, you see these like massive flat stones that are like uh, platforms for you to like bring bushels in and uh, like crush grapes, and all of them have like massive giant runes on them and are gifts from uh, friendly giants that have like occasionally come down. Uh, this mountainside to like pay visit and pay homage to the ever thirst and challenge you to a couple cups and then go home and sleep it off <laughs> when they lose. Yeah, every couple of months of like some up and starts like, I'm gonna take on the dwarf. Oh God, I'm gonna show them to, uh, these old men don't know what, and then they get, they get put down like everyone else. 
I imagine it's like man versus food. I love this so much. Like people just want to do the challenge. We're like, got a challenge, Hank. Yeah, it's it is is man versus food, but at no point did I have to quit the show because my doctors told me to stop. <laughs> Wait, is that what happened? Yeah, that's why, like, he only did, oh, yeah. like, two seasons, and then the, the subsequent seasons are, like, I'm coaching other people how to do this, because he's like, my doctor said I should stop doing this. Uh, I mean, you amazing. see his face during some of them. It looked like he was going to literally explode. <laughs> what a and nightmare. Little, and his poor little jacket just kept getting, like, ugh. <laughs> amazing. He was great. He was great. I loved that show. Uh, okay, well, while you're speaking, uh, the camera will sort of pan over. Eoj, where do we find you well, 20 years in the future? I've got a shop now. It's called Raisin, like raising bread. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, amazing. It's a bakery. And I've, you know, it, it, it does okay. Um, I feel like maybe I haven't really tapped into what the people want. They want but not I, raisins. We've told you a hundred uh, times. <laughs> it's not just raisin bread. It's called raisin bread because bread has to rise. Like the dough has to, it, it's, it's, it's a play on words. It's a dad joke within a dad joke. Can you, can you not? Please make for me what may be the most important <laughs> role of your character arc, which is yeah. a performance check to see how well received raisin bread is. Oh God, I hope it's well. Oh no, I don't have any extra modifiers for performance. So let's see what uh, here's happens. what we'll do. I'll also add in uh, now is the time I will give this to you. Uh, let's go. Uh, you so self aware can opener gives me a reroll. Architox gives the table a reroll. Zenora 1911 gives a, the table a reroll. Naughty It gives a reroll to me. Dragon 55 gives a reroll to me. Post Dataist gives a reroll to the table. And Dehennessy gives a reroll to me. Sweet. She's oh got my more gosh. than we do right now, you guys. I do. I like it. Also, thank you for these uh, sweet unlocks. And I'm so sorry. In the midst of doing all of this other stuff, we have in fact reached our sub goal for the night. Thank you all so much. So I know I said a lot about you being level 18. I did do a fib. Please, at your leisure, level your character to 19. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, As y'all are basically demigods at this Thank point. You, Love it. Thank you, chat. Thanks, chat. Balls. Amaze so balls. Weird. Amaze balls. Oh, to my DNT beyond. Got All right. My character. Okay, so. What was that roll? Uh, you can level up in a sec while, uh, after all of this happens. Can I pretend like I didn't roll yet? Can I? Okay. Uh, well, you I can do whatever good. lie you want. I stand by what I said. If a player no, wants I don't to fudge lie because they it. want to, like I always want to, but I, I never do. <laughs> if you ever feel like, like you really got a fudge a roll for the story, I trust you all. Very eosh of you, Terry. To be honest, no, I I honestly do don't. I, I would like to fudge rolls, but I'm just like ah no. Most of the time, they're not good. <laughs> 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 That's real life. Um, yeah, uh, I'm just gonna take a reroll. I know we don't have do that it. many, but I'm gonna do it. Sorry, Whatever, chat, chat's going to step up big style. You'll we haven't had a lot of opportunities to roll this session yet, and we're almost That's halfway true. through. So. That's true. Go exactly. for it. I'm, gonna I'm sure that will be dice, buddy. the trend for dice, the rest buddy. of That's yeah. much better. That was a six first, and now I got a 15. So okay. I think that's better. Yes, with a 15, you're in the North Ward, which is the second nicest ward in Waterdeep. And Raisin Bread is doing super well. It passed that sort of like fad phase and now it's just sort of an institution in the north ward and lots of people uh they do the like tartan thing up in san francisco and there's usually a line yes. like right at like 5 a.m and like cool assistants from uh noble families in the sea ward and the nicer parts of the north ward will send their assistants super early in the morning to like get a fresh loaf and yeah, you're usually sold out by 11 a.m., which leaves you a whole day. I love it. And then I have the rest of the day. I go fishing and, you know, or go like spend time with the wife or the family. And I, I like it. We're yeah. still married. Oh, if you want us to be. And you look down at your wedding ring and then at your other hand, uh, both of which covered in flower. And there's this large gold uh, stone uh, ring with like a heavy, jagged blue stone that seems to glow with its own light. 
Uh, my question to you, E.O. Mertz, how did you get the legendary ring of Ginny summoning that you have on your right hand? Well, you see, there was this adventure once upon a time. It was out and about. I was probably in a place I probably shouldn't have been, as you do, especially mm -hmm. when you're on a good adventure. And I was like on this plane, but it was this plane. Uh, I feel like I was sailing, but it was actually some like element of air or something. I don't know. Uh, I was drunk, um, but I was there. And uh, so basically uh, there was this like, I was tested, I'll say. I mean, I'm still married now, very happily, but sometimes there, don't look at me like that, wife. Sometimes there are people along the way sometimes women who will try to lead you astray. Now I'm not blaming these women because I'm not that guy, but there are temptations. So I feel like I've lost the plot. <laughs> My wife is sinking and she doesn't want to see. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Go on. <laughs> oh, this is what I wasn't supposed to tell. So. You're not telling her, you're telling us, your friends who would never snitch you out to Addie. Okay, great. I'm telling Addie. <gasps> Me and her are like this. No, snitches get stitches though. Uh, I get stabbed every day. I don't care, Bria. That's true. That's very true. Fair. So anyways, so as I was saying, I was on this journey. There was a beautiful woman there. I got distracted. She led me down this crazy like rabbit hole, so to speak. You get there, there's this like person who's like, there's not enough time or something. And then there's like this cat and it's crazy. And so he talks in like riddles and rhymes. I don't like it, but I guess maybe I kind of understood him because maybe that's how I talk. Shoot, okay. So anyways, we're down the rabbit hole. Finally, you know what? I feel like I'm late to this t whole story right now. Maybe I'll get to it. Maybe there's roses, maybe they're red. I don't know, but no matter what, I ended up at the bottom of this hole with a ring from a genie. It was like a whole new world and I can't explain the rest. Amazing. Uh, have you, how often do you interact with this ring? Uh, you know, I try to use it sparingly because it seems like an abuse of power, but I also, find that the the genie that I've made friends with because of this ring is pretty cool. So uh, what's their name? Their name is uh, Samson. Samson noted. All right. Me as well, hold on. <laughs> uh, and he, he's very powerful, but he feels trapped sometimes. So I like yeah. to let him out and we hang out and we drink every now and again. All right. Uh, you see Samson kind of like looking at you through the like chunky, uh, like G.O.D. Uh, ridges of the ring. And he just sort of like knocks on it. Yeah, yeah, dude. It is five o'clock somewhere. You're right. Hold on. Sweet. And you let him out of the ring and this massive swirling blue. Uh, <laughs> it's just, no, we're gonna make him a different color. Uh, he's green, this one's green. Uh, <laughs> a massive green genie. I have had a friend like you. I no! have though, but I have. Can't do this. Bri, you have to stop. So many Honestly, Disney references, we're gonna get sued. You are you guys, you guys, did you see, did you see my cartoon I posted on the internet? at a game terry like of oh, me what? oh i did that was really cute okay that was so cute. my friend kate is an amazing artist and she made a really cute cartoon of me like from like of me from disneyland and it's the cutest thing i've ever and all i could think so about all cute. day oh my gosh i have to I have all to day you have to look it up Check it's out so my, cute my social media it's on all my social media it's today. really great i it's assumed you good. commissioned it it's, it's i asked so her she's one of my friends we were in show choir together in high school She's an amazing artist and blogger. She's been a mommy blogger for like forever, but she also always wanted to get back into animation. So she just moved back to Burbank this year. She's an amazing freaking artist. She's always been good. So I'm just super stoked to have her back in town. Kate Ham Art, follow her as well. Okay, so. 
What a plug. Back to the story. <laughs> I just, sorry, I was very overwhelmed with the emotion. You're I cried good. about it today and I can't stop thinking about it. So it's if I really good. Making you're Disney golden. stuff, I can't help it. You all, I also picked a genie. <laughs> yeah, you're good. You, you did. And Samson just sort of like conjures this, like, it's a massive, uh, absinthe like set up with like the thing and the spoons and the sugar it's a whole big thing and he's like does this feel good for today are you all sold out yeah we keep hey i think that might be something to do with you because i've been told most people don't like raisins but i add them in a lot of stuff we have here and people are still buying it they must not be able to taste them or maybe are you disappearing i don't you know i'm not going to ask how it's getting done but I thank you. That is the correct way to go about this. Uh, don't worry about it. Enjoy the fruits of your success and uh, let's get lit. <laughs> and he pours you a drink and you sort of like clink little fussy looking glasses behind like the closed for the day sign of your like very well-to-do shop here. The way uh, we do it here, remember Samson? It's booty. Oh, booty. Well, fuck it. We might as well do some toasts while we're here as he shouts booty. Um, everyone raise a glass. We have a bunch of wonderful toasts. And the first one is from our friend, Tony. Tommy. Tony? Tony. Who says, sorry, bays. I'm too tired to rhyme. Booty. We get it. Booty! Booty! Uh, our next toast is from DJ Regular, who says, Consider this my contribution towards the Salt Bay OnlyFans goal. Not that I would know what that is. I only use the internet for saving throw, streaming church service, and Zoom Bible study. Support sex workers! <laughs> it's not over! Booty. You can just cut off the toast when you feel like it. Listen, Y'all are out of control. Listen. All humans have fun, though. Now we <laughs> say it. Booty. Booty. Support sex workers. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but DJ regular is a pure soul. Pure and sweet. And DJ supports you. <laughs> you specifically. <laughs> Just you. you. And Just our you. last our last toast is from our good friend, Jimmy Buffett, who says, fuck mid-roll ads. <gasps> booty. Oh, booty. Booty. Oh, booty, booty, booty for that one. That was booty rocking literally everywhere. Ooh, Cypher of Tear. Hey, girl, hey. Uh, gives a reroll to the table. Oh, that's oh, not me. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to give a cool plug to like your show. I, that's I will out. also give a cool uh, plug if need, be, if need be. But you didn't give me the reroll, so I'm not going to say shit. Abria, don't be petty. Oh, my uh, God. I'm petty as shit. Have you met Degouton. me? Degouton. <laughs> What word did you say? What did I you said, call me? I said disgusting in French, I think. <laughs> She's nice. dissing you on multiple languages now. Hey, it's so good. <laughs> I like it when you call me that. I like it a lot. Uh, okay, so our camera sort of, dear Braid, please get your shit together. Uh, so our camera drifts away from uh, Raisin Bread and it moves onto the streets of Waterdeep where it finds Trislin Arana. Where are you? Uh, Trislin is making her journey. Uh, making your way downtown. She's making her way downtown. She's walking what? fast. Yes, faces. faces are passing <laughs> everywhere. But like, where are you headed? Mm. Like, are you homebound? Uh, you know what? She is indeed homebound. Thank you so much for asking. And uh, as she as she reaches her uh, homeward bound destination, she's going to uh, stealth and attempt to to pick a little pocket sneakily. Through the crowd. Pick a little pocket. And things never change. Please make a sleight of hand check for okay. your girl. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Where did those glasses come from? I've had. I just took them off for like two seconds when y'all stressed me the fuck out. Now they're back on, so I can see <laughs> shit again. You're like Superman. Uh, <laughs> a completely different person. I was like, who one is she? Where did Bria go? Oh, <laughs> Take your I glasses off. There we go. Just one sad curl right there. <laughs> Clark Kent. Just the one. Just the one. Okay. adorable. Love that. Yes, please. Uh, what is happening? Oh God, it's all falling apart. Please help. That's a, that's a 21. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, go on. What do you do? I will hand you narrative control. You've rolled high enough. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're um, welcome. She sneaks up behind Hank and just steals a couple pieces of the food that he's been gathering from the vineyard. And she hands it to the uh, like little menagerie of animals that are encircling him. And she's going to just kind of like whisper in his ear and she's going to go, you don't have to wait for dinner to feed them, you know? I keep telling you this. Listen, it's about rules. There, there's a proper time, and every day, you know. I don't understand the rules, Henry. They're hungry. Just feed them. Henry. <laughs> Listen, if they, if they, it's you know, there's you gotta be structure. Otherwise, they're going all over the place, and I don't, I don't know. You get headbutted in the butt by a by a little goat <laughs> in pajamas. Just a baby goat. It's like. Meh. <laughs> She's just going to scoop that little baby goat up and she's going to go, you don't need structure, do you, Christopher? No, you don't. Christopher <laughs> needs it most of all. He's a bad boy at the group. Yes, you bah. are, Christopher. And he just poops. He just poops downward. And she's going to come down and she's going to go, okay, then. <laughs> yeah. That's why you leave the pajama butt open. It just drops out. It's like a <laughs> little... What's the flap? What's the flap score? Yeah. 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 That's what the flap's for. Uh, and she's just going to start snacking on, on some of it herself, and she's going to walk into the house. Some of his poop? <laughs> oh, the food. Why are you <laughs> like this? <laughs> well, I didn't hear about the food. I was worried about the, the goat in the pajamas. What do you think she was feeding the goat in the pajamas? I, I don't know its own poop. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Nice. Okay, let me human blood. What? What? Human blood. What about what what is he why are you saying that? Because <laughs> because goats are Satan in disguise and they and then they eat a little bit of blood and they say, Would no, you that's like Phillip. to live deliciously? That's just Philip. Just just yeah. Who's Philip? The the one goat that's jet black who says that. He does oh, say is that. It, is it him in disguise as not that goat? No, this one's Christopher. Don't talk to Christopher that way. You know what? I think in a lot of those movies about a child being Satan, sometimes their name is Chris. Also Damien. Damien, Chris. Damien mostly. I've named all of the goats after a uh, popular uh, son of Satan names. <laughs> so there's Damien, there's I Christopher. Knew I knew it! <laughs> Just, just like a whole cast of horror movie characters yes. in, in yes, Hank I and Tristan's house. Sweet. Does Vanna okay. know what a goat is? Yes, I do. It's Satan. <laughs> I've explained that. Amazing. Okay, uh, so let's see. I'm rolling on a little table to see what the question is. Of course, I, I roll the edges thing for you, and I'm so sorry. No. Uh, my question for you, Trist. No, let's change it. Well, now I'm curious. Okay. Uh, when, Trislin Orana, in the last 20 years, did you feel most close to losing yourself? And that means whatever you decide it means. If not, I'll give you a happy question. Oh. Uh, oh, I like that one. I think that's a good question. Um, I think... The closest that Trislin felt to losing herself over the past 20 years would be uh, she visited uh, Bale and his wife uh, at their home mm -hmm. and they had uh, children together in the time since she last saw them. And uh, I think seeing them with their family mentally that took her back to a really dark place of realizing that had uh Bale's mother not intervened that would have been her sister and those would have been her nieces and nephews and I think it kind of caused her to have a little bit of a a breakdown for the first time of realizing that uh she could just never go home and never return to the life that she's built for herself through the salt bays and she could just uh leave and be completely isolated she has no actual family she has nothing like forcing herself 
to come back uh, at a certain time. And I think her framing the situation that way to herself was the like closest she's ever come to undoing the progress that she made through being a, a member of the Fair Juliet's crew over the years. And uh, I think... I think uh, the thing that probably brought her back would be finding something like going through her belongings and uh, finding the weapons that they used to like their, their God Slayer weapons, you know, and remembering mm -hmm. everything that they've done together as a crew and remembering uh, everything that Eoj and Addy and Hank have done for her emotional growth um, and rather than leaving that behind and going off on her own, she tries to engage with Bale's family and, and tries to get to know his kids. And, like, it pains her, and she sits there kind of, like, grimacing and just awkwardly patting them on the head because she doesn't know how to interact <laughs> with them normally. But she tries, you know. She, she actually forces herself to be uncomfortable with being someone new and, and dealing with emotions instead of pushing them away. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah. How are you different now for your experience? I think she's calmer and I think mm -hmm. she's a lot less angry at the world. I think she was harboring a lot of resentment for like the life that her sister never got to leave, uh, lead. And I think that um, seeing literally that life goes on and that, you know, Bale has now uh, had kids of his own and that they're growing up and that they're real people with thoughts and feelings and that they're not just like, uh, you should have had kids with my sister. Like, you know, your wife doesn't deserve this and you don't deserve this. Like seeing them in the flesh, I think made her a little kinder and a little gentler and a little less angry. What a good answer. Hell yeah. <laughs> good so, answer. It's like, yeah. on, on, uh, I, like I thought about this. And, like I care about this character or something. It's like good on answer. Family Feud where they get, where they, someone does. Yeah, show me suggestion. emotional growth. Good there it is. Oh, number one on the show. Number chart. one. Emotional growth. We love to see it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So as uh, the, the sort of wind pushes past you both uh, outside with surrounded by <laughs> demonically named goats that are vying for your attention and your sweet, sweet grapes, uh, we push down towards Abby. Where are you? Uh, I've journeyed to the center of the earth and yep. um, I found God there and, and she's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, okay. I think, uh, I think in this moment, we, we kind of, there's a close up shot and it's Addie and she has, um, I think it's Sigourney Weaver in aliens, plural. She has like the cropped curly hair. And yeah, it's, just like, it's sort of just like atrociously 80s, but in a sexy way. We love it. Um, and she's like arm wrestling some like random like man at a table. And uh, and there's this music that is playing in the background. And it's sort of it's sort of lulled. But when the uh, the chorus kicks in and it has this like huge punch to it and it's just an absolute like fucking bop, like the beat drops, you know what I mean? And then that sort of like spurs her with the strength and the energy and the inspiration shall we call it um to to slam slam his his hand the rest of the way down and she sort of kicks her chair back and stands up her biceps rippling yeah you know? um and uh then the the camera sort of pans back out and you can see there, there. She's in a tavern, and there's a small stage in the corner, and like a humble bar across, uh, across from it, and a number, number of chairs and tables that are that are filled up, even for uh, you know an afternoon. Uh, and there is, uh, there is a, a you know, a, an, a, I guess, gosh, probably like. Yeah, sort of like, <laughs> sort of like middle-aged man, 
like a like a, a young dude in like his early 40s or something uh-huh uh, like a like, super hot 40 year old what's that yeah we're we're talking paul rudd kind of Ooh, shit here. he's yeah. 51 yeah he's so much older than 40 <laughs> I'm friends with one of his friends from like high school. He's 51. I'm pretty sure he's only in his mid 20s. That's fair. And he's 26 a vampire. according to the cartoon, the uh, not a cartoon, the ad that came out the other day. But yeah, How old 51. is Chris Evans? I feel like Chris Evans is like 40, right? That feels right. No, I'm sticking, like with, I'm sticking with Paul Rudd. I'm sticking okay. with Paul Rudd. Okay, respect, respect. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's like, he's up on stage, like leading the band in this like, awesome awesome song that has this really like powerful inspiring chorus uh and as soon as they wrap up she's already standing and she turns her attention to the stage and she's like clapping and screaming at the stage like louder than anyone like other people are excited and they're applauding but she's like she's being outrageous about it you know and then um and then the man on the stage sort of is like oh my god and then she walks behind uh, the bar and starts asking people like, okay, what do you want to drink? What do you want to drink? And then it pans out even further and we get an exterior shot of the tavern they're in and it's called Gail's Ales. <laughs> and it's her, it's her son's business that he started after he got out of Bardic College. Uh, so that- I love can, you so much, Fred, can make you have it. done so much that I'm like, ah, <laughs> yes. When the break comes, I'll rewrite everything. Oh my God. He, he's- he wanted to create a stage for himself. Like he was like, he didn't want to like go around working for other people. Uh, it's like, um, I think- Please it's stop not- talking about him, please. For the love of God, Why? talk about your character. Oh, because but- she built a whole adventure and story and like a good DM, she actually wrote some stuff out. Wait, am no, I messing most- everything no, up? Mostly I want to know about your character. You're giving me a lot about Peter, but we want to know about Annie. No, but this is her thing. Like, Okay, she- okay, okay, go back. Okay, okay, let me Continue. back it up. Let me back it up a little bit then. Okay, Addie's working there because she reconnected with her son. And one of the, he was of course very like bitter towards her at first. And one of the like, um, I think I'm using this word right, contentions. I think that's the right word that he had is that um, is that she had to like forgo her life of crime if he wanted if she wanted to have a relationship with her and I think at first it was like touch and go but after a while of it like being bumpy and watching like Rose grow up and not have like have a have a sort of strained relationship with her brother because of that then she just sort of eventually gave into it and was like fine and then and then she's like, well, I don't have a resume. <laughs> it's like, that's fine. You can work at the tavern as, as a barkeep. Oh, concession. I got no marketable skills. Concession. Thank you. <laughs> nice. One of the concessions that she made or uh-huh. that he, he demanded. So, yeah. So I don't know. It's, I'm talking about Peter, but it's like, like Addie for her, her whole journey is like about her disconnect and her reconnect and her and how and how that connection like shifts and forms with like her children and all the relationships in her life. So I'm talking about Peter, but it's like, I think that gives an overall context. It's like who she is as a person now and who she is as a mother and who she is as like a, a worker and like a citizen and things like that, so. Thanks. All right, and my last question to you is when in the last 20 years, Addie Balmiar, did you feel the most alone? Ooh, I think it was after, I think it was, it was, it's a tie between the moment where she snuck, they made it to Waterdeep and she snuck into a performance of like her son's music. And she was sitting there and she was like everybody to this person, but she was absolutely nobody to this person. And I think it was just like one of those out of body experiences where you just, you're sitting there and then you zoom way, way, way out on yourself and you're seeing yourself in that chair and you're so small. And this person that you're connected with is even smaller and just so far away. It's like a tilt shift lens sort of effect and they're out of focus and and it's, it's almost suffocating. Um, and then I think the second time she felt that lonely is when she finally had the gall and like, and the like energy and the and the like where or the like wherewithal to try and connect with this person and it was like 
he he was so close to saying yes but it was like it was like it, the concession was stop being who you are stop being who you've always been and it was something like she was so knee-jerk reaction did not want to agree to like couldn't like physically her being and like psychologically and could not agree to it but then stepping like walking away from that and then just having that on the mind of like all you had to do is change one thing and it's kind of like you know the world was muted and everything you know sounds sounds just like did it they were all uh quieted in her mind and it was like her eyes couldn't focus and it was just like it's just this one thing it's just this one thing and you can have your son back but that's such a lonely feeling because it's like you're disconnected from them, but you're also disconnected. You're being asked to disconnect from yourself and what you've always known. So probably a tie between those two things. Nice. And uh, as you are uh, sort of walking through your victory lap and heading back behind the bar uh, to pass out rounds that are being raised in your honor, uh, they're paying, of course, uh, your mind <laughs> sort of drifts back to that moment and you are snapped from your reverie as your daughter, a woman grown, rose, pushes into the bar and flags you down and sits down and just sort of like is a ball of fiery energy where you have found like peace and calm. And she's like, you will not believe the day I've had. Oh my God, the, the blast. And she just starts going on and on. And that is where we're gonna take our break. We'll be back in a couple minutes for the second half of our adventure as I rewrite the entire second half of our Oh adventure. no! <laughs> I'm just kidding. We'll see you in a minute. He's we'll not kidding! <laughs> and we're back for the second half of the penultimate episode in the Pirates of Salt Bay arc here on Saving Throw Show. We'll be back with something else later in the future, but that's that's a conversation for a different day. For now, let's do some toasts, hand out some re-rolls, and drop back into the fiction. Our first toast, please raise a glass. Oh, I actually have like a cup this time. I did it. Uh, our, first, our first toast is from D4 Dustin, AKA Tommy, uh, the taffy, Taffy boy, He's, it's Tommy the Taffy boy, I'm so sorry. Uh, he says, from Tommy, eat all the taffy, get drunk, get loot, and most of all, get that booty! booty. Thank you, oh, Tommy! Oh, gone but not forgotten. Uh, our next toast is from Derek Lee Ketchum, who says, love seeing the Salt Bays reunited for this penultimate episode. Banna, welcome home. Booty. Booty. Okay, that was wrong of you. No, it was good. It was good. No. It was good. No. Are you gonna cry now? Too? You gonna cry? I cried when I saw your face tonight. Did you, Abria? You weren't that on. Did happen? No, I, I remember that. You? I could see you guys, even though my internet was like. I, I can, I think. I uh -huh. cried a little bit. <laughs> it was beautiful. I, I only cried once this entire trip, and it was because I was listening to Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. Love and Becoming. It was really good. Very good. It's so good, but the one chapter where she talks about her dad dying is like, oh. I lost it. But weirdly, I've been uh, very robotic in every other sense. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm like I should be emotional about leaving all of my friends. I should be emotional about a new place. I should be emotional about so many changes. And to, but I've just like, I'm just dead inside. <laughs> you're not dead inside. You're concerned. No, you're, it's called tired. Yo, that though. It's called compartmentalization. It's gonna it's come back. It's fine. It's gonna come back and it's gonna be bad. Like a month from now, I'm gonna have a mental break and it's gonna get really sexy. That's when you call us. <laughs> All I can hope is that like periods, both of ours will sync up and we can go through it together. <laughs> I would love and that. And also it'll be over at some point. Oh my point, God, hopefully. let's. Let's freak yeah. out and buy a bunch of kayaks. Yo, I'm about to buy a fucking goat. So like, Wait, add really? a kayak to the list. Um, 
we'll talk about it later. Talk later. I love goats. Also, I want chickens. So we got a whole farm going here. Let's oh go. my God. Oh, Mental my breakdown farm. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Just when you just become a one woman cottage, cottage, like maybe a cottage will make me happy. Okay. But let me, let me tell you this. Oh, <laughs> emus although terrifying you can create a lot of amazing products working with those creatures i mean isn't there i was gonna say something about their oil but i feel like that's a bad oil to get i don't think that comes in a good way Let's let anyway last toast she said i don't Wait. think that comes in a good way <laughs> stop it you stop it right now <sighs> i'm sorry <sighs> nasty our last toast is from mocho <sighs> modern child who says goat yoga uh, see how we brought it back uh, to shape that booty. booty smart smart uh can we please get a confirmation from trislin that she does in fact do goat yoga in the vineyard oh you know it and uh, i just all the the like baby goats before they're old enough to really learn try and like nip at her tail when she's doing different like when she goes into downward dog and her tail kind of moves a little bit with her the baby goats kind of like jump over it and run and play with it yes they learn very fast that they will get poisoned if they do that though so uh. i mean yeah (laughs) they've learned and they like start telling each other like don't do it i did it it was super bad for like a week but you're gonna up and you did it and now you're just gonna barf all over the (sighs) field they learned mom gestures in goat <laughs> My babies. like is it like this <laughs> <laughs> um okay so i just want to say thank you so much chat for unlocking uh, amongst other things a pull from the stein eric can you get that ready and let me know when we're good to do that i am ready oh my god eric you're so good at producing uh please vanna Roll your most goat-like D10 for me. D4 for me. I don't know why I said 10. I am not a part of this. A two. All right. A two goes to Eosh. Okay. Uh, This is uh, interesting. Uh, uh, You speak in a squeaky voice uh, for one D3 days. (laughs) Embarrassing. You lost a bet uh, against, there was a drinking, just a little, a light drinking contest between you and Samson. And he's like, if if I win, I'm gonna do something stupid to you. If you win, um, what do you get if you win? <laughs> if I win? Oh wait, this is this a He's technicality or is this like a, a do I do a It work? already happened, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but generally what's like what's the stakes for dumb things that you gamble with uh, oh. with your gin friend? You know, really important things like um you know, I feel like I don't want to make it bread related but I literally can't think of anything else. Yeah. If you if <laughs> I you so win hard. I will make sure that none of your bread is underproved for the next 10 day or yeah, overproved. Yeah. It's just gonna be well proved. And you lose the bet and you have a squeaky voice for, uh, please roll, what's a D3? I don't know, roll a D6 for me and then cut that number in half. Half of three is 1.5. All right, uh, fuck it, it's a day and a half now. <laughs> Great. There you go. All right, uh, so Eoj, you arrive to Gail's Ales, besqueaked voiced, uh, dropping off your last round of the day, which is uh, some like nice little buns that like, they're usually stuffed with food for drunk people at the end of the night. Uh, it's your last little gift uh, to, to Peter. And uh, you go to drop these off. And as you arrive, you actually see uh, that a wagon is kind of pulling up and the word I'm going to use is parking, but I know that it feels deeply anachronistic, but parking uh, are Trislin and Dirty Hank and uh, several big like pallets of wine 
and ales and drinks of oh, many I natures. Like all of this. I feel like we're, I missed the Ren Fair this year and this is making me feel like that right now. Congratulations. We're at the Ren Fair and someone's holding a turkey leg and wearing Adidas. <laughs> I feel personally attacked. <laughs> So you all sort of flood in at the same time as uh, Rose is finishing her story where she's like, and all of you have to go to this fucking gala because you know- it's Hey, what did we say about swearing? To not, wait, are you honestly, to not? Yeah. In intelligent women find better words. You're really smart. Though. Make a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh my god. Oh wow. Okay, I rolled pretty good. Um, oh, why is my deception plus eleven? When did that happen? Uh, because you're level a billion. Thirty-seven. Wait. Shut yeah. Up. Wait. Twenty. That's what can't do math. Twenty-seven. Uh, your daughter pulls a little ornamental like black metal dagger out. She twirls it across her fingertips the way her auntie Tristlin taught her. And she slams it into the oak of the table and casts zone of truth and says, uh, so go ahead and make a charisma saving throw for me. That's really rude. As your daughter, a, uh, a cleric in her own night. She actually has a character sheet that I'm working off of right now. 15. So yeah, you do not pass her DC. And she says, okay, you're a good liar, but like, I can say a swear, can't I? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Your mother's oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Yes, you're the only one that understands me and my need to say fuck. And she's one of the most brilliant people I know. And she curses literally like a sailor, actually like a pirate. Oh, we can't I'm... talk about being a pirate anymore around Peter. Okay, leave Peter out of it. I'm right. going to leave Peter out of it. He's old and he can take it. He's not you're old, old and you're if... afraid of pirates. Oh, okay, all right. If Peter's old, then I'm ancient. So watch yes. what you're saying. Then all of you are super fucking old. Look at Dirty Hank. He's old. You want to go? You want to go That's around? Amazing. You I'm, want I'm to go around, man. see who's, who's I old? Mean... I mean, it does, it does get harder and harder to get out of bed every morning. I'm, he's literally palming, like in one hand, every, th every cask that he brought, like several, like way too, like a comical amount. He's like, yeah, I mean, every day it gets harder to get out of bed. Anyway, so I put these in the same spot. Uh, yeah, put them in the back. <laughs> I don't, and Peter's just in the back, like, don't, don't work here. <laughs> you don't, she's like, ah, yeah, but I work for the Black Staff, and that means I basically run all of Waterdeep. Oh, uh, he's basically the puppet. Who taught you to get on that high horse? Because it certainly wasn't fucking me. Dad, do I'm something. I'm not saying anything. I don't know how she's able to fucking lie in here. I cast zone of truth. I'm not lying. <laughs> You're a fucking liar. I'm not or I need to work on my spells, and you must no. lie. She believes the things that she says so hard. <laughs> Disgusting. I'm not lying. <laughs> You're doing you're doing a spell on me, make me tell the truth. I cannot lie. Hmm. You did not get that. No. From me. All I'm saying is your my magic must be broken. Uh, we're all going to die, and the 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 arcane veil that holds us all afloat uh, in the celestial planes must be warping because you're a fucking liar. Onto Trislin, how are you? And she just walks away from you. She's so dramatic. Where does she get that from? Fuck. Oh, I wonder. Right? Tristan, shut the fuck up. <gasps> Good Language. See you. Language. <laughs> and all of yours is sort of wrapped up in this warmth and the routine. Uh, this is something that you do every now and then. Uh, I have a question for you. Where is the fair Juliet? It got. She's with her boyfriend, the Dandy Romeo. Uh, <laughs> um, what an answer! <laughs> hear me out. So sorry, I hate it, but I I couldn't stop talking. <laughs> I saw your attempt at restraint, and I respected it. 
It's uh, like there's these really nice oil paintings of dragons fucking cars, and that's sort of what I'm picturing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But with two boats. <laughs> um <laughs> hear me out <laughs> i don't want to even a little bit <laughs> no nope. okay you all are thinking about this too much so in i guess inter- i'm sending you all a print <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice cars hey, really nice hi, dragons do me a favor everyone really look nice at me. don't google it don't look at me don't google it don't look it up just google, google it, it. Chat. don't google it there's a whole chat subreddit. google it google it Google. Google. Sure, there's like a whole TikTok. Hi, I'm the TM. I feel like that's like a uh, I cast silence down the rabbit hole <gasps> on the group. Don't do it. I looked it up and I'm sad that I did it just now. So don't you do it. All right. I use I use prestidigitation to do a fart smell in Abria's nose. Oop! It works. I don't like it. Oop! It works. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, hear me out. <laughs> Terry, Terry's still laughing. Oh my God, dead. I was trying to stall for her to come back to life, but she stays down. Terry, I gave up the above above game. I gave up my life of crime. How do you feel about um, since the captain sort of relinquishes that? Maybe maybe the crew, in one way or another, disbands as it seems to have, and we give the fair Juliet to Sirda. Oh yeah, that sounds great. Okay. That sounds way better than the BS I made up. I am. So I mean, sorry. both can be true. Both can be true. Why not? Uh, but for what it's worth, Eos, uh, like a stepchild of your very own, you still maintain the telepathic link across any distance with uh, the fair Juliet, and she apprises you of her life on a uh, fairly regular basis. Uh, you didn't have to tell me about that shopping trip. That's fine. No, it's it's oh, okay. Okay, no, oh my God. I'm a good ship and now I have um I'm I'm a different color. They shellacked me. Oh, that sounds very nice. They look very good. What is the color? Do you know? Um I can't see myself. But it probably just feels really nice. It's like when I, I take a I feel very like nice I look bath. good. Yeah, you it's do. like that. Yes, I bet you do. You feel great. Thank you. I bet you feel so nice. great. I do I don't know what that was supposed to mean. That does sound weird. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm learning. You're you are already learned so much beyond well, no. what I could have ever imagined. I don't see, but like I can feel when you're like on the ship. So like I just saying I miss all of you walking. Uh Sirda stomps a lot and it's I don't know. She's it's, a very strong nice. woman, I'm sure. She's yeah. a Heavy lot like feet. her mother, I'm guessing. Probably. We that's that's Captain Addy's daughter. And you just hear her like <laughs> lead away. Skr- 20 years later, Sierra never brought it up. No one brought it up to her. Wow. You didn't understand that that's. Why would I, what? Okay, I I'm you also I'm 20 years older. So I'm a little more mature now. How the fuck would I know that? I can't see any of you. I'm aware, but you have a very keen sense of empathy and feeling for people. And I thought that that was- She doesn't have that weird. accent. You know, the, oh, toy to tote, 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 I can't tote. do it very good either. I know. I, I can't do it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if it was Addy, it would be tote, 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 tote. But Sierra doesn't but talk like that. The was torn. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I got to go. Bye. We're about Bye. to be in a fight. And then you just hear cannon fire as a, like- <laughs> Good luck. Be safe. Thank you. Ow! You know when you're done. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, you guys are all in the bar. And uh, now that Rose is standing next to you, Trislin, she says, will you please explain to everyone that you all have to go to this stupid fucking gala tonight, please? Really? You took one look at this group and assumed I was going to be your be- best bet. At, uh, you're the only one that understands me. Event. I am so Fine. edgy now, Fine. and I figured you would understand. You're Fine. acting like you're 18. You're fucking like 22. <laughs> I'm 21. Likely story. Ridiculous. You never card anyone, so I could be any fucking age. You don't know. Well, if I carded people, we get less business, stupid. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to report you to the Black Staff. Oh, okay. I'm going to tell all the greyhounds 
you fucking do that, I'm going to report you for being a fucking cunt. So how about that? <gasps> I'm Whoa. going to tell Taika on you and she's going to fucking kill you. You know, if she was going to, she definitely would have done it a hundred times over by now. So good I'm luck sorry, with that. I'm waiting for you now that you're old and you've lost a step. I'm not old! <laughs> I don't want to. I'm a cleric. <laughs> Put it up. Let's see who's fucking. No. I won't. Dirty Hank, do something. So there's enforcement. Okay, I'll arm wrestle you. <laughs> I want this so badly. Do it. I would like do to do it. This arm wrestle. Dirty Hank will be my champion. If if I win via Dirty Hank, you all have to go to this stupid fucking gala that I may have promised that all of you would show up for because you're big deals. I guess or whatever uh if you win uh you don't you can do whatever you can sit in this dank little shithole and drink your beer all right don't disrespect your brother like that we're i don't care about about my brother and she just like sticks out her tongue at him and he like flips her off and they just like kind of giggle and walk away from each other i think addy like throws something at her oh make an attack roll something like uh, innocuous just like a bread like roll a, a, it's like that restaurant <laughs> in Missouri where they throw rolls at you it's it's a raisin she throws up she tries to bounce a raisin off of the middle of her forehead yeah go ahead and make an attack roll uh ddddd ah. an arm strike baby how do we do that in dnd beyond there uh, if you go to actions there should be a list of attacks one of them would, should be on un- arm strike you literally can just click ah, that it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it will do all the thing for you i'm assuming non-lethal raisin damage so don't worry about the damage a dirty 20 a dirty 20 i kill uh, her with a raisin <laughs> i'm gonna roll against that uh she takes a raisin to the forehead she just looks at you and goes you're real fucking mature yeah, sort you've of made that down. very clear. <laughs> okay, so you go between calling me <laughs> old or then like immature. So I don't understand. You can she's be both. Just young at heart and fun, and she's pretty cool. You don't have we're to defend cool. her. Da. You is don't your, have to defend her. Is I your love her. Say we're cool, fellow kids. <laughs> oh, that was the most upsetting shit I've ever heard. Um, young so- people, we're young people. <laughs> You're oh. making this worse, you. <laughs> No, you're so. Are we listening old. to the you're new old. music and the sound of the of the youth? Oh boy! Oh boy! Let's boogie down. Oh, this is aging me. I'm going to. Whew. Whew. Dirty Hank, please defend my honor. Are we you getting know, jiggy you with know, it? Oh, 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 let's oh. let's go. You know hey. who uses puppy garters as fucking cowards? Just so you know. I am a coward. <laughs> She's just standing behind Dirty Hank. <laughs> Great. Are we just doing a, the opposing strength check? This is an opposing a, a opposed athletics check, please and thank you. Okay. Just want to see what that feels like. Let's just let's take these level nineteen babies for a little spin. Uh, I'll hand out some re rolls. Uh, there's one re roll for the table from Mortem in Teratum. Uh, to you all. One from Potter Boy 111 goes to me, and Pickle Weasel PhD goes to me. I'm using two of my rerolls to say you only have one shot at this roll. Winner takes all. Winner takes okay. it all. What did you roll? I rolled a 24. <laughs> okay, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Do I still uh-huh. have Bardic Inspiration? <laughs> no, you used it oh, to win no, the last arm wrestling. No, you said I, you were inspired. Oh, you can I have? It. it was a figure of speech. I, I will also like. I am plus fifteen to athletics, so. So you rolled badly. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. roll right. <laughs> How about this? Uh, Bardic inspiration will work. You can add it, but you both get to re-roll. Round two. Okay. Add a d10 of Bardic inspiration from Peter. Okay, I got in total, I got a 28. Okay, oh, shit. I, on the reroll, I got a natural 20, so that's 35. <laughs> oh, man. It's your Those fate. Those are such high rolls. It's your fate. <laughs> From both of you. And it goes back I and forth. I hate you. What? <laughs> it goes back and forth. And then uh, at some point, yeah, I'm going to make this even worse. Uh, 
You break my like, arm? <laughs> no, 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 no. But uh, your daughter, the cleric, is going to put her hands on Dirty Hank's shoulder and cast guidance. Not that he needed it, but I she just knew she was looks you in the eye oh and gosh. casts it like, Dirty Hank, I need you to win this. <laughs> Make my mother show up and be good and not rude the whole time. That wasn't the part of the agreement. And then I never you said I had to be civil. <laughs> <laughs> and you lose uh and ever and like everyone in the bar like gold like gets tossed back and forth and changes oh hands. okay 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 who's fucking next then who's uh, fucking uh, next you might want to you might want to stand down you shut mother. up Eosh, okay do I'm... you want to do you want to wrestle me next will that feel good uh, excuse me. This is a place of work. You need to calm that all the way fucking down. And Peter's like, hey, I didn't mean it like, like that. I just wanted once mom I to calm down a little bit. I was trying to diffuse the situation. Ridiculous. Well, it, it does calm me down. You're so, oh God, please. I will fire you, mother. Please don't. That's we've got a, a permanent room upstairs. I mean, it's deeply upsetting. Can you uh, honestly, if I pay you more, will you not live over top of the bar? No, it's really nice very convenient to just come down and to it's work. not too far from raisin bread right and then we can just go upstairs and fuck it out whenever oh <laughs> my god well all right uh aren't you glad your I parents quit. still love each other though um <laughs> yikes. Ah, yikes. Oh, wow. nope uh, oh. i am an orphan <laughs> still am an orphan <laughs> it's all of his stuff away hank's and, gonna hank's yeah. gonna like lean over to tristan and go it can can we kill each other at the same time? Like, uh -huh. I'm glad you said it first because I was thinking. In 20 years, it. in 20 years, y'all still hate love. <laughs> yeah, but it's a shared activity. Tristan, oh. didn't you go through a transformative experience? <laughs> like, but not yeah. about your love. Familial love, not romantic We're love. We're your family. Yeah. Fuck. Oh my god. Degouton. Uh, Tristan's just gonna turn to Rose and she's gonna go, so what's the dress code for tonight again? Uh, if you could dress up in literally the nicest thing you have, it's the beginning of uh, art season in Waterdeep. And uh, as she explains this, you are all very aware that like as the weather turns cold and uh, goes from fall to early winter, the art season opens up here. And uh, there's like the beginning of like opera stuff over at like the Lighthouse Theater will be soon. And this is just like, the hoity-toity pre-ball before where all muckety-mucks will talk about, I guess, being rich and privileged in Waterdeep and uh, high level. So this is a city that loves and reveres adventurers and all of you being level 19 uh, adventurers are basically demigods at this point. You're all very popular and uh, people are only giving you space and allowing you a semblance of normal life because they all like you so much that they're like, no, 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 we don't, we don't ask them. We just let them live their lives. But it's this sort of like, everyone gives you the look of like, I'm leaving you alone because you're famous and I'm chill like that kind of like situation here in Waterdeep. But yes, you I would be expected to be speaking in a squeaky voice. So I'm going to be speaking in a squeaky voice for this very nice event. Oh no. <laughs> uh should we excuse me go... what the fuck is that dad what are you doing please don't do uh, that i i, I something in my throat i'm not quite sure uh... i can't tell if you're just fucking with me because you know that this is important I to me don't i honestly i don't think i'm that good at trying to do something that like malicious for an evening i'm so sorry uh sure do you have a lot of friends that are coming? Because I can't wait to meet them, honey. Oh, my fucking God, no. Wait, why is this so important to you? I've been, well, my internship with the Blackstaff is uh, winding down at the end of the year, as you know. Um, or maybe you don't, because I don't tell you anything about my life. Yeah, um, I do. Oh, I bullshit. Any of that. <laughs> no, well, we've, uh, it was mentioned in passing one time, several. Anyway. Uh, I just, is that what you were talking about that dinner a few weeks back? And I honestly, 
I ate too much and I just kind of passed out. You no, know how sorry. your father gets when he's full of food. His ears don't work. No, I, you don't have to explain to me. I've lived with him my whole life. I know exactly what he's like. Um, But yes, now that... Oh, he's, he's asleep right asleep. now. This is why I call you all fucking old. This is ridiculous. What? <laughs> this fucking halfling... Your dad's of- old. Your dad's old. I'm not I'm even middle-aged. The youngest... No, no, no. I mean, I I will live longer than you, for sure. Okay. That's kind of sad. And now I'll... I mean, not yet. It's not. Oh, oh look, <laughs> the little the little death sleep. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, super important life things for me, but no one's super worried about. Uh, I have to sort of have my coming out as uh, a cleric of the city do i need to walk it's you it's my like- domain no it's well, not honey we're gonna love you no Is matter what you? so Th- thank you i guess do i need to help i don't know what that's supposed to, to fucking mean you, you, said you're, you said you're coming out oh like a I hate you all so much. I told you I was gay years and years ago. Love is love is love yes. is love. Okay. Anyway, uh, and she just turns back to Trislin with a look that's like, if you kill me, <laughs> you have to kill me before you kill yourself. That's the rule. <laughs> it's white tie. Wear your best. Don't drink too much. And I'll see you at uh, eight. Okay. I can promise three out of those four things, and that's the best you're going to get out of me. Honestly, that's a win. Thank you. Let's go get ready. Sweet. And that's uh, like eight sharp or like a sailor's eight or a... I don't know what that fucking means. <laughs> you stopped being a pirate when I was like old enough to remember stuff. Sailors and pirates are different, first I don't all. think that's true. <laughs> And uh, as this sort of like fades out and wipes, uh, we come back up. Uh, there is a massive gala in front of uh, one of the m- like main houses of one of the like mass lords of Waterdeep. And uh, there's these beautiful like sconces and torches that flicker and pop with like colors. And uh, they're like all this like beautiful, like rosy pink. And the smell coming off of them is like, it's like sugary. So they're all heavily enchanted to be like really sort of saccharine as you walk into this like candy and dessert themed like pastel. It's basically like a Rococo hellscape. Uh, <laughs> <a gala. laughs> Sweet. What are y'all wearing? Let's do an outfit. Give me Fit an outfit. Check. Fit check. Dripper dirty, down, motherfuckers, let's go. Dirty Hank yeah. looks like Master Roshi, just Tommy Bahama shorts, uh, shorts, Tommy Bahama shirt and sandals. It's the best thing he's got. His nose is bleeding. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> uh, I like to think that that's totally routine for Trislin and she has spent years, like they spent years arguing over it and she's finally just accepted that like that is the best Hank is ever going to do. Yep. Um, Trislin is like, Wearing a, a full, like, tailored tux with heels, um, but she doesn't have the bow tie tied. So she's like Angelina Jolie, like, 2014 BAFTAs look kind of thing, you know? Yes, thank you. Oh, uh, my God. Yeah, she's Are just you on like, a staircase? Rose is giving you a look right a, now. Painting like... a picture because I feel like you got to be on a staircase because that's your power move. She's like, Rose, I held you as a baby. Stop looking at me like that. I can't. Please, I please will. Stop. Okay, 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 stop. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> stop. I'm, I'm just down. saying, I can appreciate that you look really nice and I'm not worried about it like that. You just look very nice. It's all. Don't worry about me. Anyway. Tristan, okay. what are your intentions as my daughter? <laughs> Mother. <laughs> Addie, what are you wearing? I'm very uncomfortable that I play both of them, by the way. <laughs> oh, I'm shit. I'm going to exit out of here. <laughs> Self-love is important. That's pretty hot, Amazing. actually. Uh, uh, I'm wearing a blue suit to match my uh, blue dragon mask. <laughs> Are you wearing the mask? Yeah, I. you know, I think she misunderstood and thought it was a masquerade. Yeah, so, you're yeah. getting a looks. <laughs> but <laughs> I am honestly, also definitely wearing a mask because she told me she insisted before we left the house. It's a masquerade. 
That's what she said, right? She said it's for the arts. It's got to be a masquerade. Those art people love fucking masks. This is my coolest mask. Best dressed. Guaranteed. I mean, you look good. You're just wearing a mask amongst a bunch of people who are like, okay. But they don't say anything. They're not even wearing a mask. They're not even going to win. This is going to be easy money for you. Easy. Wait, money? (laughs) Yosh, what are you wearing? (laughs) I'm also wearing a mask just to match. (laughs) Addie's, you know, and I, I feel very uncomfortable uh, and I, when we get there and I'm like, I, you said everyone, why are we the only ones wearing, uh, whatever, at least we're doing it together. Okay. Uh, I'm wearing, um, she's wearing, you said blue, I, I'm wearing green. I have a green mask and like Situation. a little green suit and a yeah. little green suit. I put on a nice suit. Cause I heard, I tried to listen to my daughter and I'm trying to be a good dad. Nice. Uh, so yeah, as you all like make your entrance, you you get like a standing, op- like everyone's standing, but they all like sort of stop, the music stops, gives you all an ovation. Uh, some of the most lauded adventurers here, uh, you are greeted by the masked Lord, uh, Vittoria Castellanter. She kind of comes up and is very effusive with you and uh, poses for uh, sketch- sketches, this is the equivalent of pictures here. And uh, gets like a nice group shot, holds the pose for a little bit too long, keeps you all a little too closely, and then like sort of saunters on on at, to the rest of the party. My mask produces hot breath. It's because it's just, a dragon. Sweet. Yeah, just so uh, you know, it's you real see extra her, uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, you see her like spit out on the side that you're breathing on, <laughs> and her like pale gray uh, satin is just like deep gray with like a big old flop sweat on one side. And she's like, oh, that's, that's terrible. Anyway, enjoy the party. Uh, Has anyone seen Vajra? And kind of walks away and Rose will come back up. (laughs) And Rose kind of comes back up to you and says, ah, hey, dirty Hank. Yeah, that, that me. Tristan, I thought you would do something. This, this is, is the nicest I got. This is the nicest he has. It's but the, it doesn't have to be. You have so much money. Right? Uh, uh, attachment to the material is detachment from the spiritual. Rose. I literally this is as nice as it's going to get. Didn't Hank do a great job? Yes, Jersey yes. Hank, you did a great job. Oh, thank you. It's nice to hear you sincerely say that. I tried to let him know that he could use some money from his bank. There's, I'm not going to borrow no more money from you. It's bad enough I had to borrow that money for that for that plot of land which you own. It, it's it's not it's not mine. It, it's it's okay. You know what? Well, sure. I don't know why mine. you're sleeping in that bar. You own that whole farm. Right. Okay. You have to tell him, Dad. You've listened your whole life, right? Have you heard me try to explain? I know. I I just, I don't know. I know. You just have to. Honestly, we're just going to put it in a trust and, uh, you know, do the best we can with it for a lot of people. We're doing fine, Rose. Don't worry. Sure. Uh, Okay. Well, uh, I guess go talk to everyone and... um, if anybody asks, or even if they don't, tell them how uh, very cool you think that I am. Uh, <laughs> and let me know if you see the black staff, because I haven't seen her all night. Okay. Uh, which direction was the bar? Oh, there's one there and one over there. And if you drink too much and embarrass me, I don't care if you're basically a demigod, I will smite you into oblivion. And over there. Listen, I Noted. have out drunk cloud giants, okay? I don't think there's enough alcohol in this establishment for make me embarrass nobody. Hey, you, Hank, mu- you, you might- You know, you I know that, that I'm talking, oh, sorry. No, no, do not, no. Trislin is a lot of things and you see her take exactly a far enough step back that she is out of your tail's range because she knows that like a cat and says, but she's a pathetic drunk and you know it. Don't let her kill me. And she steps behind Addie. <laughs> She's not wrong. 
I mean, yeah. pathetic is not the word I would use. Uh, juvenile or um, absurd. Or also good. I would outrageous. not say I w- pathetic also is really not a fun. word. I have watched Trislin be drunker than I've seen anyone in my life and kill a man in the most horrific ways possible. I also saw her play with her toes in the middle of a life-threatening battle, so. It's the little things in life, Addy. Okay, tell that to sober Trislin. (laughs) Tell that to sober Trislin. You know, if I ever see her, I'll let you know. Shall we? Oh Lord. Okay. 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 Just okay, basically okay. admitting you have a problem. This is fine, and I'm fine. <laughs> she just starts like low key hyperventilating on the side, and is no. gonna wander off to look for. Uh, Addie turns friend. around, and 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 since her mask lets her speak draconic, she says, "I love you. I'm proud of you." And in draconic, <laughs> she. I mean, Addie turns around. <laughs> Rose turns around and just speaks draconic and says back to you, which by the way, sounds like snarls. She literally just growls back at you like, I love you too. Please don't let, <laughs> please don't let her do it. Don't let her do it. She's so bad at drinking. Hank, Hank from like halfway across the room uh, just yells in common, I also love you. I Aww. want to die. We're There's all, we're time myself. all the embarrassing parents at the yep. party. The chaperones. <laughs> it takes a village. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So a village uh, of fuck ups. Oh, uh, just an Ouroboros. A village of Ouroboros fuckery. Oh, Ouroboros that's Ouroboros right. Ouroboros fuckery. Yep. But uh, all of you see, uh, and even Peter is here. He took a gig playing with like the main band because it's good, easy money playing very boring music for very boring people. That's true. It's kind of the only way to make money. (laughs) Yeah. Getting money from normal people sucks. You can just get a lot of them from people who have too much and don't value it. Eat the rich. Anyway. uh, (laughs) Speaking of eating the rich. But support uh, the channel, guys. Thank you so much. (laughs) I I need all of you to make a perception check. No, No. First, let's make, if you are having any adult beverages, please make a constitution saving throw. And then I want you to make a perception check. I, I, I think Addie still doesn't drink. Yeah, respect. You're old and old people can't drink. It makes sense. I'm not good. old! Um, feels good, it feels good every time. With my modifiers, I rolled a five for the con save. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, you're still going to make the perception check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. Hank, Hank rolled a 15, so he's not being so careful with Trislin. He's like, uh-huh. we're having fun tonight. We're out. You know, we don't get to go out much. The night on the town. How drunk is Trislin? What? Oh my God! Wait, inspiration. Oh <laughs> now, please make a perception check. You can make it with disadvantage. It'll still be a million. Yeah, it'll <gasps> still be a bajillion. So, I'm so happy. This is the best of all possible worlds. This has never happened to me before ever. I rolled two thirteens, uh, which Favorite with number. my perception it's because of your goats. Twenty six. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so Trislin, even off her rocker, hyper aware of what's about to happen. What did everyone get? Addy? Addy? I'm trying to find it. A okay. Ten. Yeah. A 10. Okay. <laughs> 24. Oh my God. Hank? 18. All right. Uh, literally everyone but Addy. Uh, Addy, you can tell me why you're not super aware of what's going Cause on. Because I'm fucking shaking my head. I was like, after all this time, y'all still so drinking. Real. Y'all disrespecting my daughter. Uh, her own masquerade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, Rose is with you going like, I can't believe she got so this fucking drunk. What's happening? And uh, as as you two are talking... Uh, everyone else, you notice that like people are sort of leaving the party, like they're exchanging whispers and then heading out the front door and sort of going in clumps. And it's getting louder and louder, the sort of like interrupting conversation as people are starting to like drift out and go to the front. Hey, my son is playing in this band, you better sit the fuck down, get back in here. 
See how they make it is. This is in Draconic. <laughs> <laughs> there's like, there's like little sparks of lightning coming out the nostrils of the mask. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead and make an intimidation check for me with advantage as okay. you yell at like a group of uh, people who are trying to go out the front. Let's see, a 24 or a 14. Let's go with the 24. I like the 24. Yeah. yeah. And like a group of like eight uh, older elves, like old for elves, so they're like a million, uh, kind of stop in their track at you. And uh, you see one of their eyes sort of lights up and is like active translating using tongues because uh, you're yelling in Draconic and they're like, uh, okay, uh, we will go back in. We're just, there's a performance piece happening on the front lawn, but we'll stay here for the music. That's fine. And they like all sadly go back and sit down. That's what I fucking thought. You're doing great, sweetie! And Draconic. <laughs> can I, You're just can like, I ah. see... <laughs> you said people are going... Do, do they look like they're, like, fleeing or hurrying? Or does it actually look like they're going to just casually move to a different part of the party? Um, with your uh, 400 uh, roll in perception, you notice that it's a mixture of, like, excitement like ooh, what is ooh performance art and some people who are like genuinely concerned and don't know what's happening so it's a mix okay um are we is this party venue like part outside part inside uh it's actually like super inside and then out on balconies on like higher levels but like the front area was not a designated party zone no got it okay it's actually um, a little bit too cold for that. Tristan is gonna kind of like, I don't, she got very drunk very fast. I don't know why I haven't, I don't know how to explain that. Uh, <laughs> it hit her hard. She pre-gamed on the cart on the way. Oh yeah. Uh, the wagon party was happening, I guess. Um, <laughs> she's gonna turn to Hank as they're walking and she's gonna go, he, I'm, he wasn't saying anything, but she's gonna go, shh, 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 shh. I have to talk to my owl and she's going to turn and she's going to like keep holding her finger up at him like one second, one Ooh. second. And she's going to bend down and get like a tiny little figurine of an owl out of her uh, pocket of her tuxedo. And she's going to put it on the ground and she's going to go, okay, here's what I need you to do. I need you to listen real careful to me, okay? Those people, you see those people? They're acting real sus. So you, right here, right here, Owly, you need to go follow. And you tell me, you tell me right here what's happening, okay? And she's going to use her figurine of wondrous power, which can turn into uh, a giant owl for up to eight hours and can communicate with her telepathically at any range as long as they're in the same plane of existence. So, uh... Did you put a giant owl shit. inside uh -huh. this house? Yeah, yeah. She's real drunk. She's real drunk. Sweet. Oh, uh, my God. Have you ever seen a regular bird trapped in a house? It's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> she real drunk. I rolled up five on my con save. <laughs> Who does she think she is? And this be figure. To be fair, she shushed Hank Ooh. before she did it. So no one Terry, knows it's please. happening. Okay? <laughs> Very secretive. Dirty Hank. Yes. I just want to ask a quick question. Do you have mm -hmm. any regrets knowing that you are absolutely responsible for this? What <laughs> vital vintage did you give to Trislin it, to turn her into this mess? Hank has, he, he's been, he, he's made a lot of different, he makes a lot of different uh, brews, but the, the one that he's most proud of, the one that is like, it's like a wine that's barrel aged for several years is called mm -hmm. Torm's Blessing. And it gets you fucked Thrain's up. Blessing? Thrain's blessing. Yeah. Uh, it gets you fucked up real quick. Uh, and he had like a, a flask of it. And uh, Trislin pre-gamed most of the flask on the way here. So she was already three sheets when she walked in. Hell yeah. Why not? Let's go. <laughs> every time Trislin takes a sip, she goes, I have been blessed. And every time she does this, it, she does it louder and louder. When you drink ah! it, you you've... <laughs> You feel a warmth spread through you like you've been blessed. 
Wow. Um, and I y'all think, are enablers. <laughs> but I think Trislin's super secret is that there have been a couple times uh, since the invention or the like uh, bottling of Thrain's blessing that, uh, oh my God, I for- Asune has appeared and said, and she just leans in really close and goes, sangria. And those strawberries mixed with Thrain's blessing is just you. Mm-hmm. Tristan and Marana have invented brunch. That's 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 probably <gasps> oh. what he, he gives. Like he made that especially for her. It's only for Tristan. Only Tristan. Oh, because Tristan oh. loves brunch. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. I just really love brunch. I just <laughs> like I always knew that I loved breakfast and I loved lunch, but I didn't at all. I can love them both at the same time. And you made that for me, Hank. Like you let me have that, and I just. Yeah, I know how much you like breakfast, but I know how much you don't like getting up before noon. I don't, I don't like waking up that early. And the <laughs> owl, the eight foot fucking owl, like fluffs its feathers because it also loves brunch, you know, voles. Oh my and God. And like looks around, realizes it's inside, gives you a look on the ground and just waddles following the people out the front door because it has to fucking walk. <laughs> and there's just party goers that are like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the owl in, in Avatar the Last Airbender that guards yes. the library. <laughs> He's pissed off. 1,000 things. <laughs> And there's a little fox on the side, the little, a little coyote spirit. He's like, like, I don't trust humans. And this is why. This is 100% why I would rather be a figurine. And just walks out to the front, takes wing, knocks like three little bitches over and uh, goes up in the air and starts circling overhead to see what's happening. And- uh, tr- So inconspicuous. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the things that's really cool about this figurine thing is um like we can telepathically communicate with each other which is mm-hmm. super super cool and um I just want to clarify uh-huh. can Trislin send anything back to the owl because I know for sure the owl can say stuff telepathically to her I just don't know if she can let's assume a telepathic connection because it would be really stupid if it was one way right okay so as soon as the owl walks away, Tristan's going to start telepathically going, you left before I could tell you all my favorite brunch foods. And this, oh. one's, real, this one's real important because um, I was trying to tell the goats about, and like she just goes off and yep. the, the owl is just it's like, oh my God, Damien. this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the, <Thank> bird. <laughs> the bird is going to make a roll. And I know this is wild, but it's going to attempt... Uh, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw as the bird attempts to incept you oh, to God. shatter the figurine <laughs> when he gets to return. This was my fancy we do have rerolls, item. just so you know. There are some rerolls for the table still. If you the threshold it. is so low. He's just okay. being dramatic. I'm just letting what her know because she looks so worried. Throw? Yeah. Okay. That owl figurine this. said, you cannot sit with me. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Um, that is a, ooh, that's a 17? Yeah, it's super high. And you just okay. hear, please, just crush me under your boot. <laughs> Let this be done. That's not appropriate because I'm monogamous, so I shouldn't crush anyone under I oh god well thank god there's something horrible happening out here so I can change the subject you should probably come (laughs) outside thank you (sighs) ah and uh (laughs) it caws out of frustration and you hear or you see through your telepathic link that everyone is sort of circled around this figure with uh seems like very very tall disproportionately so throws back their hood uh, and they are, their skin is blue. Uh, (gasps) Smurfs! Avatar! Honestly, Vidalkin look a lot like Navi. (laughs) So you see a navy blue Navi, just full Avatar with a- I hate it so much right now. Yep. 
Uh, all of you recognize those robes from 20 years previous. Gargamel. Why are you like this? <laughs> Gargamel wears a robe. <laughs> And he tries to trick the Smurfs into yes. letting him murder. Okay, okay, them. okay. Uh huh. And <laughs> and uh, this Vidalkin like pulls. They reach into a rip in space and pull a bound uh, Vajra Safar, the Black Staff, the most powerful caster in Waterdeep in this part of the world. And you see him with his other hand pull out a long metal spike and plunge it through her shoulder all the way through so it comes out of the front. And her whole body seems to slump down around it. And Trislin, you're seeing this from, uh, from the top down so you don't hear, though you know through the connection that words are being spoken as eventually Vajra's like body sort of jerks back upright and starts looking around. And uh, through that rip in space, you see her pull uh, and she tele telekinetically pulls out these like eight massive spikes of Chardolin, the magical metal from 20 years ago on Frere. And with a massive surge of energy, she sends them all across Waterdeep. What do you do, Trislin, as you see all of this from overhead? And now all of you can hear like alarmed shouts happening from outside, especially the like surge of like, ah. Can as, I ask uh, a, a technical question? Yes, please. Is this like a we're rolling initiative thing? I mean, when you get somewhere, you can absolutely roll initiative. Okay. I just wanted to clarify. Tonight, probably, but. I wanted to clarify because I have a new ability. And so I, I just oh. wanted to get into the nitty gritty of um, stuff. Good. We know. leveled up a lot tonight. Thank you, chat. You did. Thank you, chat. Um, so uh, how far away am I distance wise? Uh, Like. Probably 120 or 150 feet. It's like all the way across uh, the floor and out the front door. And you're drunk. Yard. So. So miles, drunk in miles. <laughs> okay. You were going to take a nap halfway there and <laughs> take a nap right here. <laughs> uh, I think as soon as the owl, like, because as drunk as Tristlin is, she did send, have the sense to send the owl yeah, to go of investigate. I think the only thing she processes in her drunk brain is like sound loud bad, like stuff happen, owl say bad. Mm -hmm. And so I think the only thing that like she has the um, wherewithal to do is she just puts a hand on Hank's shoulder and she points in the direction that she know the she knows the owl went to. And she says, Trouble. Bad. How bad. Okay. What do you all do? She uh, just says it to Hank, right? I'll assume that you all were in the vicinity. Cool. Uh, Hank will, I guess, throw Tristan on his shoulder and just start running towards where she pointed. That's super cute. The, like the traditional lot. fireman carrier. Yeah. <laughs> of drunk Tristan. We're flying! <laughs> <laughs> flown in so long i'm starting to think i didn't know that's not true it. what about last week what <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why i'm trying to have this conversation with you. keep going hank <laughs> uh Eos and addy what do you do i should uh, follow yeah uh i i would like it noted uh also hank's uh what movement <laughs> speed right now is 55 feet yeah, so I'm gonna do my Jesus. best, but I'm a little smaller. Okay, well, Hank will get there. Do you need me to lift you over my shoulder? Yeah, like... Fireman Carry! Do it! I'll give you inspiration <laughs> if you pick up Yosh. Is this a thing we started doing? <laughs> Guaranteed. I think we need to be more like Tristan and Hank. You know, they're very carefree in their relationship. Uh, I think every now and then you should just let me pick you up and run. <laughs> 
I don't think they're very carefree in their relationship. I feel like we're a lot more expressive about how we feel with each other. And All right, I'll just pick more- you up. <laughs> okay. Ah! <laughs> and both sets of couples sprint out the front door. EO sh- or uh, Dirty Hank, you get there two and a half hours before everyone else because you go very fast. Uh, and yeah, what you see in front of you is uh, probably... 250 terrified nobles and Vajra, her eyes clouded over with like this frosted matte version of that metal, massive spike protruding like all the way through the the flesh of her shoulder. And she looks loose, slack up, but seemingly propped up by whatever this is. And I'm going to need you all to roll initiative. Spicy, spicy. Yep. And she lifts one finger up and is going to attempt to cast Circle of Death. <gasps> what the fuck? That sounds bad. Okay, I, I, I rolled a 22. All right. Ooh, let me do any of my part where I write down your initiatives. Good. God bless Abrea. Uh, 22. Hank, what'd you get? Gosh, bless I got an Abria. eight. What? Eosh. I'm about to reroll, I think. Smart. Do it. Yeah, give me a sec. Okay. Uh, Trislin. Um, so I got a 19 for my initiative, but I mm-hmm. also have a new ability called Thieves, Thieves Reflexes, where Hell yeah. as, as long as I'm not surprised, I can take two turns during the first round of any combat. My second turn is taken at my initiative minus 10, so it's 19 and 9. Good to know. Damn right. right. Holy uh, shit. Uh, uh, Holy shit. That's awesome. All right. Uh, um, 14. All right. You got a 14. And Rose got an 11. She did her very best. Um, yeah. So circle of death comes at you. I need, uh, yeah, let's start with, uh, this happens just a half a second before the rest of you get out the door. But I do need uh, Dirty Hank and Trislin to make a constitution saving throw. And a bunch of nobles are going to too. And I don't think it's going to go well for them. Do you feel like death is near us right now? Is that the sound? Oh no, that's you. <laughs> that's how you say it. I feel like it's in a circle around us somehow. <laughs> it feels like it's encroaching me like all around, like 360 degrees. Sorry, what, what save did you said we need to make? Constitution save. Oh, wait, we had to make it too, right? Uh, it's well, you know what? Fuck it. It catches all of you because it's a 60 foot oh. radius. It's 120 feet. It's going to catch literally everyone here. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. Wait. So all of you constitution save. Did I do? Did I just you do that to thing? An 18. Where, where I was that student who reminded the teacher they hadn't collected everyone's homework. And no, I'm... it's fine. I like it. Yeah, you did. Oh. I rolled yeah, this, yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. Roll. Do we have any more re-rolls? Yeah, there's a few. Let's do it. We still got, we got, we don't have that much time. Let's do it. Yeah, right. Done. So, since I'm wearing this very cool mask to this masquerade we attended, uh huh. Uh, Not a masquerade, but uh huh. <laughs> well, tell that to my mask. Um, <laughs> I can use legendary resistance once a day. If you fail a saving throw, sh- sh- saving throw show, <laughs> <It's> auto. <laughs> Good plug, good plug. <laughs> That's the name of the channel. Um, you can cho- choose to succeed instead. So I'll just do that. Hell yeah. All right, you pass Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, just let me know yes or no. Did you beat uh, 18? No? Uh, I did not. I'm super duper quickly trying to scroll through all my new fancy level abilities to see if there's anything that helps me, but I don't think there is. Dirty Hank. I did. Okay. Those of you that made the save are only going to take 20 points of necrotic necrotic damage. Everyone else takes 41 points of necrotic damage as half of this party is wiped out in the first volley. Holy shit. Bodies drop. You said 20 points? If you passed, it's 20 points. If you didn't pass, it's 41. Woo! 
41? Yep. Great. That's how old I am. Just take a teary amount of damage, if you will. Terry said chick after that was just like <laughs> iconic. Why did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So as the field is cleared, you all see uh, this Vidalkin staring at you. And he says, oh, it's about time. <laughs> Welcome back. And speaking of time, I think it's time for them to wake up. Don't you? No, and no, <laughs> no. And you hear massive rumbling. Uh, you guys are all very high, so I'm not gonna make you roll to like save against this because you'll all make it. But a lot of the other uh, party goers that are still technically alive get knocked over by this like rolling mass of earthquakes. And off in the distance, towards the coastline where one of the eight super massive statues of Waterdeep, the lady dreaming lies in beautiful repose beside the light singer opera. A massive shard of Chardolin through her throat. She begins for the first time in a hundred hundred years since the spell plague to push herself up to standing as do the eight other statues of Waterdeep as they begin their rampage and you face off against a magically compelled Vajra. That is where we're going to end for tonight for did your did final did battle. Did it, did it, did it, did it. How dare you make it? You made a Ghostbusters immediately. I hate you. <laughs> I did not know what she was singing until you said it was Ghostbusters. So thank was you. Was it Ghostbusters? Yep. Okay, that's because we're Agreed, married I and I know you. I get you. I'm I just, you. I'm so grateful for our marriage every day. Every day. Every long day. distance. It feels good. It doesn't we, feel We decided like... to do long distance because we were like, we just need to prove to the world how strong our love is. Exactly. Like, it's kind of just because we can, you know? Honestly, yeah. like, it made all of us feel bad seeing how much you two loved each other. We're yeah. like, we got to split this apart. It was for and our friends. Real. They forced me to move away. <laughs> <laughs> they threw rocks at me like old Yeller until I left. It wasn't <laughs> rocks. It was actually just raisins from uh, failed attempts at raisin bread. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, when whoa. they get dried out and hard and gross. Whoa, 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 whoa. Same, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> gonna reconstitute them. That's the nice thing about making banana bread. In rum. It's a rum raisin. So next time we will pick up with a super massive big set piece fight for the finale of Pirates of Salt Bay. That's oh, wild. The not ready. I know, right? I'm not ready. It's gonna be great. I love y'all very much. And it's gonna be super fun. All right, uh, where can everyone be found until next week? Let's start with Havana, my I, wife. I'm like, I'm I'm on the brink of Michelle Obama's dad in the hospital right now. I can't. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you a second. I want you to think about, instead of that, think about Michelle Obama complaining about a young and cocky Barack. Oh Dude, God, so cute, so that cute. That also makes me cry. Wait, Wait why? Wait, yes. why? Their love story is- Do black people just make you cry? No, I mean, not historically. <laughs> Honestly though, I, I don't I think it's very Anna. much the other way around historically. <laughs> I cried listening to Michelle Obama's podcast when like she was interviewing Barack. I definitely cried. Cause I was like, black love. Then I God. got jealous and I got happy and I got like all the emotions. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's never going to be me. Or is it like, will it? I don't know. It was very emotional roller coaster. Okay, how it's, about Jada and Will Smith? Are those less oh. emotionally volatile black people for Red you? Red table, man. You got to come to the table. I, I, yeah, I, I, uh, feels their, like it's called relationship deep. seems complicated, but not bad. It no, like no, no, no. Away. They seem like they've been really adult about it. <laughs> Why are we <laughs> you? Why are we talking about this? <laughs> I just like when two such like brilliant like no fuck you wrestling go. Let me talk about the Obamas, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to interrupt.
interrupt that. Go ahead, talk um, about the Obama Hi. School. Hello, I'm Nega Oryx, and I'm very <laughs> sad about Pirates of Salt Banding. You can catch me crying on my couch for the next week. Um, if you want to see me doing other things besides having an emotional meltdown over having to say goodbye to this character, you can see me tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, hosting the PlayStation uh, Sony PlayStation so Showcase tomorrow for Twitch at twitch.tv slash Twitch Gaming. It'll be myself and my favorite co-host on the face of this earth, Cup of Noodle. Yes. We're going to be watching the reveal and then uh, like streaming our thoughts for Twitch after. So come chat it up with us. Um, let's so, all. What time? What time? Uh, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 okay. p.m. Eastern. Okay. So cool. let's let's all speculate what Sony's going to reveal together and uh, then come gossip with me in the chat when it happens because I'm very excited. Barbie uh, game. And then That's my vote. Crash Bandicoot me. the MMO. <gasps> oh, oh my god. Crash okay. Bandicoot the Battle Royale. <laughs> I am so ready. Um, we, I have thoughts on that. We'll talk about it later. But then on Thursday, you can catch me doing DBD co-ops. Um, Friday and Saturday. Friday, I have a surprise co-op stream that I'm doing. Saturday, I'm doing my first ever Among Us stream hell um, yeah a lot of stuff happening so come say hi sometimes it's nega oryx n-e-g-a-o-r-y-x and i love y'all i'm gonna cry next week a lot and i hope you're ready for it don't cry okay well um go ahead i'm gonna make vanna go at the end <laughs> okay well uh, uh ter terry <laughs> terry oh okay hi um you can find me at the Terry Gamble on the internet. Um, I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, probably on Twitter the most, Instagram next, and then Facebook a little. Uh, uh, I don't know. What am I doing? Oh, yes. Hold on. Nope. I have a thing. This Friday, I should let people know about. Yes. Um, I am been working with Ripley Improv. Super stoked. We have a new show. Um, our first preview is this Friday. So I believe that's something you guys can watch. Um, I believe it's like press and other folks. So check into it. Um, it's going to be streaming on Twitch if you follow Ripley Improv on there. Um, they're also on the Twitter as well. You can find them there. Um, it's a medical drama. Kind of like, you know, Grey's Anatomy and ER and all those shows combined. But funny because those shows are funny like you didn't they know are that, funny but they are really funny like lots of long looks glances but no his heart condition and i play dr florence b wells and she's dope i have a lab coat and everything i look amazing um so come you always me. look amazing thank you come see me not be a pirate but also but be like also in love like i always am as a pirate <laughs> And see if it works out there <laughs> as well. What is what is the implication there? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Love is weird. It's still working out. We're still happy, okay, but it's but weird. Okay, but the Obamas figured it out. Why can't we? <laughs> I don't know because you know what? There is some understanding that they have that I do not. I it just kills me. It's so good. There's um, no reason any relationship should survive a presidency. Like there's just no. Not reason. like that. No. No. There's no reason. They're amazing. Um, and then catch me on Mondays at Horror Movie Survival Guide, please, where I talk about scary movies that are not always romantic, but people are often struggling. And that feels right, too. Um, we're doing a bunch of Stephen King movies right now. We just did Cujo this week. Next week's this random movie I did not realize even happened. And I was like, what the hell? It's John Cusack and freaking Samuel L. Jackson, a movie called Cell. Um, it's based on another Stephen King story. It is wild. And watching it right now during the pandemic, for better or worse, also wild so check it out um we'll be covering that this next week amazing eric why hello there my name is eric you can catch me all over the internet on mostly eric which is also the name of my twitch channel where i play video games four days a week uh currently doing dragon age so watch me uh feel real weird about having to choose the really shitty dwarven king but like he's more progressive but he's also a piece of shit but like you know what am i gonna Sounds do like the current election <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Dragon Age is, was ahead of its time. It was a prophecy. There you go. Havana. Um, I don't <gasps> have what? I turned the camera off. Oh, oh so no. Sorry. Who's she a Bria now? Who's a Bria now? Who's me? Who's me now? I'm so sorry. Oh, you're still you. You're still you. It worked out. 
Was it okay? Oh, thank God. It was the last one in the meeting. It was fine. Nothing Sorry, moves. I didn't mean to pull Love focus. That. Please go. No, me your reaction was so cute because you were just like, oh. <laughs> it's usually my job to fuck up the screen so i feel good that it was you tonight i we all need to go you know everyone gets one um yeah as you can probably tell by my echoey audio i assume i can't hear myself as i normally can so who knows what i sound like but i imagine it's echoey because i don't have any furniture so um and i can't really work without uh, something to <laughs> sit on and something to put my rig on so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's follow, all. follow me on Twitter. Uh, yeah. I just get angry there and then. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just want to talk about the Obamas. Um, go ahead. This is your time. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Okay. You have one minute. Give me Obama. I'm going to start up. I need to start Check out that movie Southside. That, that it's like their love story from their first date. Don't. I saw it at Sundance. Oh. You should probably watch that. Oh, don't oh. tell me that exists. Like, oh my God. Tika Sumster plays young Michelle Obama. Ooh, and she's great. I like her. Yeah, she does a really good job. Anyway, um, high recommend. It's a very like deep cut. Most people I don't think know about it because I, I literally saw it at Sundance and I was like, oh, cool. And then, you know. I, I would probably cry it's the entire there. time. You like, will. it's just like, what's, I think what, what moves me so much about it is like Michelle at the time is like just, and throughout her life, of course, but as well at this time as such an independent woman when she meets Barack, that she's like not even interested in dating. She's like, right? she's like above his station when he's they like meet. Like, he's like his he's boss, his basically. Boss. He's, he's like an boss. intern. It's so cute on their date though. So you guys got to watch it. Cause they like, go to like, see the movie, do the right thing. That was like their first date. I love that and, movie like, like, so much. And then, yes. and then they get ice cream and then they, and then they have the perfect little ice cream kiss. And it's just like, there there's, it's, it's just like, it's like they, they built respect before they ever built like a romantic love between them. And that's just such a foreign concept to me that like hearing <laughs> No. just people breathe it's inspiration <laughs> no it's inspiration. Yeah. Inspiration. like inspiration. just so brilliant and individually driven and just like see each other like see each other why am i crying <laughs> i get it fucking like three in the morning there you're allowed to feel whatever the fuck you want you're right and they're just they're just so holy themselves and they have this like this path and they don't know the end of it but they're just so driven and they 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 know greater things are ahead and it's just like they see that in each other before they ever start this romantic love. So it's just like, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it is beautiful. I've never experienced that. So it was just like, I'm right here. It'll come. <laughs> well, right not, 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 yeah, I mean, I'll work on our marriage. It's going to be good. Anyway, but also I think I'm crying because it was just like, it was just so nice to do this tonight and I miss y'all so much. I miss you too. This is the meltdown I was foreshadowing, I think. <laughs> And I'm talking about the Obamas to mask that I'm talking about all of you and how much I love you and how brilliant I think you are. And I respected y'all so much before I ever loved you. And I love you so much now. So y'all are my Obamas. You're my Obama. <laughs> You've also got Michelle's arm. So like, let's fucking go. I fucking wish she talks about so much in that book, how many pushups she's done. And I am... <laughs> five years <laughs> you can start today vanna you can start today yeah hell yeah i won't i refuse <laughs> that's my energy that's my wife she, right there she's got a lot of drive to take care of herself and i do not <laughs> i just don't it's, it's not <laughs> you're starting off in a beautiful house and getting a clean start and we're gonna come and fuck all your shit up when we come oh my to visit. God. Someone kick a hole in the wall. I just I'm gonna. <laughs> I do not have the strength. Strength is my dump stat, but I will do my best. <laughs> it's surprisingly easy to kick a hole in a wall. You'd be yeah. surprised. Do you know how that? it is very easy. I, I, I did it once in a comedy show. Uh, drywall, you can push through that so easy. It's pretty easy. My brother did it a couple times growing up. Amazing. Drywall's not that strong. <laughs> 
I like that next is just like things I'm learning and I will use this as an action item. Like my brain got so confused because for a second I wanted to go Hank and then I went, that was Eric. (laughs) (laughs) The lines are blurred. Oh my God, amazing. Okay, uh, well, let's wrap this bad boy up. I'm Avria Iyengar. You can catch me on social media at Quiddy, Q-U-I-D-D-I-E. Uh, fuck it. I'll do the full schedule for this week because it's ridiculous. <laughs> yes. Um, so on Sundays, you can catch me over on Critical Bards channel at uh, 12 p.m. Pacific. All times are Pacific uh, for creature collectors. Uh, on Mondays, you can catch me playing. We just finished up Lost Mine of Fandelver over on D&D's Twitch channel with the Roll20 crew. We will be starting up Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, the brand new module that just dropped, I think, like today. Uh, yeah, so we are starting with session zero next week and then playing through that uh, at 1 p.m. And then uh, Game Master's Gauntlet over on Hyper RPG at 7 p.m. Next week, I will be the GM for session two out of four. Uh, who knows what the fuck I'll do? I, I don't know. I have no That's idea. It'll be fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks. On Tuesday, obviously next Tuesday will be the finale for Pirates of Salt Bay. But uh, before that, you can catch me at 5.30 over on Q Times playing Operation Emberfall, which is a Phoenix Dawn Command game. It's We had our first session today. It's already super, super fun, and I love it so very much. Uh, on Wednesdays, you can... Pirates of Leviathan! Uh, it, it premieres tomorrow over on uh, D- Dimension 20. It, it's live on YouTube at 4 p.m. and then it gets thrown behind the dropout paywall. Uh, so catch it live. Um, and then tomorrow I'm going to be guesting over on Becca Scott's channel playing Call of Cthulhu. Uh, it's going to be super fun. I'm playing with Erica Ishii and some other amazing players for, uh, uh, for one, one day of glory, uh, on Thursday, starting next week, I'll be over on dragon and things channel playing department of mysteries where adult Harry Potter people do in mysteries, uh, in the past I'm Dumbledore's teacher. I'm playing old cranky potions master. Yes, uh, you are. <laughs> every other Friday a new episode of 12 Sided Stories drops a fully produced AP podcast uh, formerly featuring Terry Gamble uh, we are currently releasing Heliotrope which is a uh, hack the planet module that I'm or campaign that I am running for the 12 Sided Stories crew so catch that and then uh, what is that note Oh yeah at 1 p.m uh, Dice Envy plays over uh, at where I work for a living, uh, we we play a few like random games. We just finished up a campaign of masks and we'll be having uh, guest indie uh, game makers come in and show us their sweet games and playing them over there. And then this Saturday, you can catch me at 12 p.m. during D&D celebration. I'm playing in uh, a one shot with a really amazing cast and it's GM by Brennan Lee Mulligan from uh, Dimension 20. That's gonna be super fun. Um, yeah, that's it. That's me. <laughs> and I love. Do you even of- like RPGs? Because it's like you yeah. don't. <laughs> I like how Bria pre-show is like I'm. I've been saying no to more stuff. Like, <laughs> in what universe? <laughs> have you she been was saying? asked for twenty more things, clearly, and these are the things oh, she has right, chosen. Right, 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 right. I'll have my meltdown crap. the moment we wipe from here. But listen, <laughs> join me here. <laughs> I told you we're gonna sync up. It's gonna be great. Uh, be great. But come back on Friday here 8 p.m pacific for wild cards the new season is up and it's live it's so good so check that out too and uh there's other great campaigns that will be spinning up here on the channel so keep an eye on our social media for that thank you all so much for sticking with us and we will see you next week good night